WKAR TV presents this Spartan Sports Special. It's Michigan State versus Michigan. And now, here are your hosts, Jim Adams and Terry Braverman. Hi, everybody. Jim Adams along with Terry Braverman from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. John Langlow about set to tee up this football. Michigan and Michigan State today. They first met in 1898. William McKinley, President of the United States, the Spanish-American War was getting underway. And we expect a war out here today. Number uh, 28, Alan Jefferson. Number 46, Webb. Back in the deep spots for the University of Michigan. Michigan State uh, kicking off to begin the ball game. John Langlow there, set to kick. We'll bring in Terry Braverman in just a moment. J.D. Anderson is with us, keeping track of the statistics today. And the ball is up in the air, and this game is underway. It's going to come down to Jefferson at the goal line. He bobbles it around. He's to the 5, the 10. Breaks out. He's fast, but he's up to about the 20-yard line, and he's spilled at the 20 or 21-yard line. And Michigan will put the ball in play first and 10. And there's their offense, Elliott at right tackle. Hussar at right guard. McMurtry will be the split end. Demetrius Brown, the quarterback. Punch will be the fullback. Jamie Morris, the great All-American candidate, number 23, the tailback. And John Colazar, number 40, will be the flanker. Every seat plus taken here today. Great show by the bands before the game got underway. Great tribute to a former Spartan, Charlie Wiedemeyer. Terry, going to be interesting to see what we see on this first series. Well, it's 47 degrees. It's cold and chilly for the game of the year in the state of Michigan, the state championship. It's the Spartans' vaunted defense against the run against Michigan with a little more balance on the attack and Heisman Trophy candidate Jamie Morris. Okay, Callaway goes in motion. The first pitch comes to Jamie Morris. They fake the reserve verse. Morris keeps it himself, breaks out into the open, and Todd Crum spills him out of bounds at the Michigan 41-yard line. A first down on the first play of the game for Michigan, and Jamie Morris, a Heisman Trophy candidate for the Wolverines, now goes for about 21, 20 yards on the first play. Good call, Jim. Uh, this was uh, successful again for Notre Dame a couple of weeks ago against Michigan State. They fake the reverse, and Morris keeps the ball. Of course, he's averaging over seven yards a carry, and Todd Crum with a nice ankle tackle, but a good call for Michigan on the opening play of this great rivalry. Yeah, Morris came into the game uh, with 579 yards already behind his name this year. Demetrius Brown looks like he might be audibleizing, gives it off to Jamie Morris again, tries to go over to his left guard, and this yeah. time these lines holds for Michigan State, stops him with maybe a yard gain. There you see the Spartans on defense. Joe Bergen, 45 at the end, along with the John Buddy at the right end, 87. Nichols and Davis inside. The linebackers, Tim Moore, Percy Snow in the middle, and... Kurt Larson. And there's the defensive backs for the Spartans as they line up. I think Michigan, Jim, really respects the Spartans uh, defensively in the line. And there's, you see, Bo Schembechler, who obviously feels maybe we can attack the flanks. That's what they showed you on the reverse. Maybe we'll be successful outside. I don't know how good we'll be on running the inside against Michigan State. Okay, McMurtry is wide right. Colazar is wild left to the Wolverines. McMurtry goes in motion and uh, goes back the other way. Jamie Morris gets the handoff again, and he's brought, no, he's not brought down. He stays on his feet until he reaches about midfield where he's pushed out of bounds. Harlan Barnett found out what a lot of uh, previous opponents against Michigan have found out, and that is that Jamie Morris will break tackles and is very difficult to bring down. He is small, he is slight of build, He's quick, and he has the ability to run low and follow his blockers and get extra yardage. And, boy, they're moving the ball quickly here. They have a third and one at midfield. Second leading rusher in the nation is Jamie Morris, averaging 144.8 yards per carry. Michigan has a third down, less than a yard to go, just about at midfield. Jamie Morris gets the ball again, and this time they had him in the backfield, and he broke away. Yep, and I Harlan think he got the first down. Yes, he did. Harlan Barnett again with a hand tackle. And you can't tackle him up high, Jim. They had him tackled for a loss, and he spun away and got the first down. There you see Mark Nichols, 83. Uh, Morris, you have got to hit low. And uh, with the second effort by Jamie Morris, he gets the first down into Spartan territory. Call it the 47. Interesting thing about this uh, game today also, Terry, is that it's Michigan's first game on the road this year. We're almost midway right. through the season, and they've played all their first uh, four ball games in the Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. Out over the football, John Vitale, the center from Detroit De La Salle High School. High formation now for the Wolverines. Bunch is the fullback. Colas are in motion. Haven't gone to the air yet. Nope. Demetrius Brown, Jamie Morris again, and again he breaks through. Todd Crum tries to shoulder him out, 
And the Jenny Morris is out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Michigan player hurt. Michigan first down. Number 80 gets up slowly for Michigan That's in their, their tight line. End, Jeff Brown. Jeff Brown limping as he goes back to their huddle. But uh, there's a good hole opened up in the middle by the Michigan offensive line. And, of course, they've got some big ones uh, with the jumbo Jim Elliott, the big tackle. And you see Morris, the hole he had. They took Travis Davis out of the play, knocked Percy Snow down, and then Morris, who can stiff arm you and get that extra yardage, does exactly that at the Spartan 34. Watch the strong tackle for Michigan, number 72, 6'7", 306 pounds. That's the big uh, fella, John Elliott. They jump him from side to side. Yep, Demetrius Brown for the first pass of the Wolverines today. Left-hander over the middle it goes, and he completes it out here to Colazar. And Colazar is dragged down by Derek Reed at the 14-yard line. And Michigan really moving on this first drive of the day. Well, one of the keys, I think, that Bo Schembechler felt to this game would be how successful Michigan's offense would be to move against Michigan State's defense. Uh, they have really not had much problems in their last couple of ball games against Long Beach State and Wisconsin. There's the 20-yard pass play to Colasar, and now they say, let's see how good we really are uh, after losing to Notre Dame and then winning three in a row, and early they're establishing an outstanding offensive drive here in the first quarter. McMurtry leaves the ball game, so Colasar is the only wide receiver this time for the Wolverines. Again, eye formation, Demetrius Brown, there's the handoff to Jamie Morris, tries to turn the corner, and Jamie this time, Percy Snow gets him, could be a face mask, however, at about the 13-yard line. That's flag. what it looked like maybe to me. The flag did come down on the tackle, Yep. but uh, let's wait and see, Jim, maybe a clip, perhaps. You know, he tripped over his own man as he went to try to find the right side. The Spartans had plugged that hole very well. The referee is Jim Kemmerling. They do call a face mask. That's a bad break against Michigan State because they had just stopped him at the line of scrimmage. Boy, that penalty hurts. The Spartans, remember, had 13 penalties a week ago at Notre Dame. The referee, Jim Kemmerling, the umpires, Les Ruland, headlinesman, Tom Ransom, John Ask, the line judge, the field judge, Otto Pulse, the side judge, Henry Armstead, the back judge, Glenn Fortin. Michigan has averaged nine yards, or nine points a game in the first period, uh, so they, uh, they score quickly on people, and then for the most part, they've been able to hold on. Their only loss, of course, to Notre Dame. Victories over Washington State, uh, Long Beach State, and then uh, Wisconsin last week. They mark it at the eight-yard line. And Michigan can still pick up a first down on this one if they get it down to the four. It's first down and about five for Michigan. There's Demetrius Brown, Jamie Morris. Jamie Morris slides inside the five, down to the four. He's going to be very close to a first down before Bergen and Percy Snow, Arnon Barnett, all there combined, will bring him down for Michigan State. Now, I tell you, this game, everyone feels, will be one in the trenches when it gets tight and if it is close and Michigan is blowing Michigan State off the line just enough to give Jamie Morris some running room. He has had seven carries for 50 yards in this drive. Well, I tell you, Michigan is averaging 316 yards a game on the ground, which is just fantastic. Of course, their opposition has not been as tough as the Michigan State's, but they're moving to the Spartans at will today. Hand off to the fullback, Jarrett Bunch, and he plows just straight ahead down to about the two, but there's a flag on this play. Jarrett Bunch, the ball carrier, 6'2", 227-pound sophomore fullback from Ashtabula, Ohio. Yeah, let's see what the call is. Well, where it came out, Jim, they might have detected... Uh... Looks like it might be against Michigan. Well, now Michigan's clapping as if it was well, against Michigan State. I was going to say for, well, I won't say what I thought it was. They called offside. Must have lined up because I don't think they jumped. And there you see the Spartan sideline, a concerned coach, George Perlis. And Joe Bergen, who's off the field right now, the defensive end. Let's see who's taking his place, Jim. Yeah, probably Jim Shemansky is in there. It is Big Jim. Uh, let's see. Is oh, it? I see no? 62 in there. Is that Sunland? Uh, well, Cliff Confer, number yeah. 62. Okay, they got the goal line defense in here right now yeah. with a first down for Michigan. First down at the two-yard line. They started at their own 21 as Bo sends Allen Jefferson in. Well, they got a great opportunity here, does Michigan. In the very first possession of the game, they've already eaten uh, two minutes and 40 seconds off the clock. Dave Chester's the quick guard. Hussar the strong guard. Elliott the strong tackle. Tom Doring the quick tackle here for Michigan offensively along the line. Vitale's the center. There's it to Jamie Morris. Jamie's tripped up in the backfield, and they've got him. Back on the seven-yard line on a game tackle, and that's what George Porter said. 
we got a gang tackle Jamie Moore, so we're not going to get him much this afternoon. All right, that's a great defensive surge by the left side of the line. A little extra shoving and pushing going on as Jamie Morris gets thrown back into the backfield. And Demetrius Brown talking with his coach, a, a junior out of uh, Miami, Florida. And now the Spartans go back to more of uh, the traditional defensive lineup. They send Derek Reed uh, back in the defensive backfield, Joe Bergen at end, and Kurt Larson at linebacker. Second down, six yards to go for the touchdown. That is time uh, Michigan uh, changes its formation. Went in the wishbone, the fake. Demetrius Brown running backwards, looks for a pass receiver. He eludes one man and steps out of bounds back here for 13-yard line. All right. He's pursued by Travis Davis and Joe Bergman, and he just ran out of territory. That's a kind of a rookie mistake there. He ran out of uh, yardage. He didn't realize where he was, Jimmy, as he put the stops on. His foot was on the line. He was all set to plant and throw, but a little indecision on the part of that young quarterback. I say young in terms of experience, game experience under pressure. And uh, the Spartan crowd is hooping it up now for that defense. Michigan was on the two-yard line, and they've been pushed back to the 13. Well, what a great uh, opportunity for the Spartans here if they can just hold on third down and let them settle for a field goal. Right you are. They go back to a split defense now. A lot of noise here at Spartan Stadium. A long call by Demetrius Brown. He says he can't hear, and let's see what they call. The well, officials the, are calling time. Yeah, the officials will call timeout. See, my own timeout to quiet the crowd. The public address announcer, Eric Verseth, will have to make the announcement that the quarterback and the team should hear the play, or Michigan State's home crowd could penalize the Spartan football team. They asked for the delay, which is an advantage to Michigan because they saw how the Spartans lined up defensively. Here's Jim Kemmerling now, says, play it over again. You know where Jim Kemmerling went to school? Michigan State. I wonder if Bo knows that. I'm sure he does. Might mention here, too, that the uh, Musco Company lights are being used yeah. here today. They were moved in because it's a late starting ball game, and they thought that by the fourth quarter it might get dark. And, of course, it's been cloudy and overcast all day. And so the lights are on to begin the ball game to give uh, good general light throughout the playing field. Brown now wants the crowd quieted down, and the Michigan State fans call. And Brown says again he can't hear, but, of course, Brown, it's not as loud as I heard well, it the official here. is not giving him time, Jim. They, they haven't even started the game clock yet, though. He has all the time he wants until they start the game clock. They haven't started it. The play clock. Okay, now Demetrius Brown goes up underneath the center. Third down for Michigan. And Brown will quick release, and he's going to be caught. No, he breaks away, and he throws. And it's uh, overthrown in the end zone. Intended for the tight end, Big Jeff Brown, from Shaker Heights, Ohio, 6'4". And that forces Michigan into a field goal situation. Mike Gillette, the junior from St. Joseph, Michigan, will come on the field. Well, that was a great defensive effort, and Kurt uh, Derek Reed, I think it was, number six, was in the backfield, Jim, and uh, there you see the blitz. That was Tim Moore, 42 in there, and uh, Brown then threw it way over everybody's head. Robbins to attempt, what, a 30-yard field goal, 31 yards. Yeah, Gillette kicking, he's three for four in the field goals this year. It is up, and it is good. And so Michigan draws first blood. 11 minutes and 10 seconds remain to be played in the first quarter. In Spartan Stadium, it's the Michigan Wolverines 3 and Michigan State nothing. We now move to action later in the first quarter. And they are out where they can maneuver just a little bit, have a greater play selection. In motion is Colazar. Demetrius Brown, Jamie Morris again. Jamie gets by the first line, but then he's stopped by uh, Tim Moore and also Percy Snow at about the 31-yard uh, line. Jamie Morris, who's the uh, older brother, of course, the star running back of the defending Super Bowl champion New York Giants, who are struggling in the early part of the new NFL season. Final score, Minnesota, 45, Northwestern, 33. Minnesota beat Northwestern 45 to 33 today. 78 points in that ball game. That was the early start in the Big Ten. Almost all the games should be over by the time this one is over today. We should have the standings updated okay to me oh! hand off to Jamie Morris and he is really stacked up by John Buddy again his second sack of the day well, that's a big hit by John Buddy on Jamie Morris who just got the football Jamie said wait guys I have to look up before I can run and John Buddy just goes right around the offensive left tackle and or missed he missed the block on that one look at Morris oh brother Buddy says hello Third and ten now, Michigan. 
4.57, the time remaining in the first period. There's John Buddy, number 87, from Kansas City, Missouri. He'll be around another year for the Spartans. Now Demetrius Brown looks at the defense, looks like he's audibleizing. Brown drops back to throw, cocks the arm, lets the long pass come down here, and it's overthrown out of bounds. It was intended for uh, Colazar, who ran right into the Michigan State uh, bench area. Boy, Gary Moeller is yelling at the official down there on the Michigan sideline. There you see him. He is really upset. The offensive coordinator, who was a former head coach at Illinois, oh, he's yelling at Brown. I thought he was at the official. Ooh, is he hot. Here goes uh, Robbins now. Okay, Robbins to punt, and Andre Risen is back from Michigan State, standing at his own 29-yard line. Good behind the, oh, boy, Robbins run into, oh. but the flag is going to be thrown. Well... Michigan is going to get another break. Not a break. Michigan State is yep. going to get the penalty, and they can't afford those today. Let's it's see. five yards, he said. Yep. He, he says it's a five-yard penalty for roughing the kicker, but I don't know if it's automatic first down or not. Let's watch it again, Jim, and see if he got a piece of the ball uh, from the right-hand side of your screen. Watch it again. It's uh, Greg Johnson. Is that 28? Yep. No, it's not a... It's not a it wasn't touched. He tried to hold him back. Here you see a different angle. Let's watch it again. Boy, he takes a long, long drop. Five-yard penalty. It was Craig Johnson in there who knocked him down. He said, ref, I just touched him, and he fell over. Well, I think Johnson is pointing out that he might have been pushed into the punter no, also. He won't. I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think so. He... Well, uh, Ryzen comes back. They're just going to have to punt it over again is all. And which may be beneficial, maybe not. Let's see what happens this time. Three to nothing. Michigan leads here in the I, opening it period. It won't be beneficial if Ryzen runs one back. Ooh. Oh, does Robin get a kick this time? Chases Ryzen all the way back to the 16-yard line. Ryzen is to the 20. Cuts to the outside. Nowhere to go. Tries to reverse the field. Comes up and he stopped at the 23. Double Good team. Kick. Good kick. Yeah. So Robbins uh, got a tremendous kick away there as he leaves the field. Monty is from Grand Bend, Great Bend, Kansas, 6'4", 202. And it's Michigan leading 3-0 with 422 left to play here in the first period. Now Spartans on first down. It's Bobby McAllister going to go to the air for the first time today. Throws one out here, completes it Lorenzo White at the 30. And he drives up close to a first down to the 34. Looks like it may be about a ball length short. But a nice play, McAllister to Lorenzo White. Well, he hasn't used Lorenzo very much as a receiver really this year. Really not since the Southern Cal game. Well, they threw a couple of uh, screens to him earlier, and right over the middle, Bobby, with uh, a hard charge on the Michigan line. It's close to the first down, but let's see for Lorenzo. That's his fifth catch of the year. Doug Mallory was able to drag him down. They bring the chains in and uh, the measure. Yeah. And it's it not. is first down, Michigan State. Four minutes, six seconds to go in the opening quarter. Michigan took the opening kickoff and marched down to get in field goal range, a 31-yarder by Mike Gillette, and that's been the scoring thus far. The Spartan defense has really been the story, teeing off on the last two possessions by Michigan, and uh, now the Spartans have to move the ball offensively. They do it right there with the first pass completion, first attempt by Bob McAllister. Okay, Ryzen and Willie Boyer both come out to the right-hand side this time. McAllister this time on the draw hands it off to Lorenzo White good block oh Lorenzo is tripped up on a beautiful defensive play by Eric Campbell the a strong side corner who really came up and upended Lorenzo White second down and 10 Jim once again Ryzen and Boyer out to the wide side of the field this time they send James Moore in motion McAllister rolls right he's looking for somebody he throws and it is caught oh a great catch by Willie Boyer Boyer is upended immediately by Doug Mallory, but he's got another Michigan State first down in Michigan territory at the 45. I think it was Arnold, Jim, number 15. What a hit on Willie Boyer, and he held on to the ball. I can't believe he held on to that ball as a 21-yard pickup. McAllister, Boyer was wide open. And that will uh, make Michigan think, look at that hit by Arnold. Oh, Nelly, get the number of that truck. David Arnold. Willie Boyer gets my vote right now for holding on to the football. 
Okay, McAllister uh, once again underneath the center, and again he drops back. Again, he gets good protection. He throws oh, another great grab down at the 40-yard line. This one by uh, Lorenzo. Lorenzo White. He took it right out of the waiting arms of J.J. Grant, the interior linebacker. Bobby said, you made me look good on that one, Lorenzo, because that's a one-handed catch. You look at Manderich, 79, blocking up front on, on uh, whoop, and holding a little bit. But watch Lorenzo come out of the backfield. A one-handed catch. Now watch. The ball was thrown low by McAllister, if we can see it. He just reaches out. Now you're not going to be able to see it. Incidentally, if Michigan uh, is watching this uh, tonight, that was Eric Campbell on the real hard hit. Arnold was right in behind him, but if Eric's watching, I don't want him on my back. There goes Lorenzo White. He breaks into the open. Lorenzo's at the 30, down to almost a 25. Fumbles the football out of bounds, but it'll still be Michigan State's ball inside the Michigan 25. Oh, there's a great run for the still Heisman Trophy candidate. And let's watch it again from the end zone camera as McAllister pitches over to White, number 34. He turns the corner behind a beautiful block there by, was that Kula or Tata? And then fakes out the first man and fumbles it out of bounds. Too little, too late at the Michigan 24-yard line. Spartans started at their own 24. I tell you, we're seeing some Big Ten football game out here today so far. Still in the first period, the waning moments. There's the handoff. Lorenzo White gets a block from who? Lorenzo cuts in, and he is down to about the 17-yard line with it. He goes down hard. Doug Mallory, the strong safety, number eight, and Anthony Mitchell were in there to bring him down. Boy, Lorenzo is running harder than I've seen him at any point this year. There's the tackler on the play, Anthony Mitchell, but Lorenzo is running with ferocity. He's just really ferocious, and he's getting the extra yard. How many uh, carries so far, J.D.? Six carries, 30 yards. And he's also caught up two passes. Second down and three. About a minute and a half to go. There's a head-on shot looking at Lorenzo White out of the wishbone now for the Spartans. McAllister carries it himself, tries to cut inside, and does for about a yard or two to about the 15. Well, he's going to still leave him about a yard short. Herman in there. He got spun around. Now, that's what Michigan obviously saw in Michigan State's last game against Iowa. On short yardage situations, a lot of times they let McAllister keep the ball. Now, the officials are calling timeout as a Michigan player is hurt. Harris, number 56, has not moved. You're looking at J.J. Grant's statistics uh, in the defensive uh, linebacking core for Michigan, but Harris is the one now who can't even stand up on that foot. Okay, the Spartans want to get into the end zone, take the lead here if they can. There's the pitch back to Lorenzo White. Lorenzo cuts in, he's got the first down. Lorenzo lunges ahead, down to about the six or seven yard line before Michigan forces him out of bounds. Oh, the student section down there is hooping it up. And you see the player that knocked the Lorenzo out of bounds, number eight, Doug, Doug Mallory. Mallory. What a football family that is. Boy, the Spartan offensive line, Jim, give them credit down there. They're moving them off the ball. Lorenzo with... Uh, James, Joe Pugh up front blocking. A nice clearing block by Rich Gisevich, 86. Great block by Gisevich. First and goal at the six of Michigan. Students want him to get in. Not much time left here in the first quarter. There's Lorenzo White cutting in. Lorenzo is down. Oh! Touch. There's a touchdown. Yes, it is. Touchdown. What a Lorenzo run! White. I'm telling you, Jim Adams, that's the best running Lorenzo White has done in a long time. He was stopped at the five-yard line and carried that tackler into the end zone. He was not to be denied. That's just brilliant ball carrier and perhaps bad tackling by Michigan. I want to see that one again and again. That's a highlight. <laughs> the Bandos may hurt themselves in the end zone. That touchdown was scored with 48 seconds to play in the quarter. Langlow kicks with Montgomery holding, and it's good. And so with less than a minute to play in the first quarter from Spartan Stadium, we've got a Michigan State lead over Michigan, 7-3. Right. Here, Here it, it is. is again. Watch this one by Lorenzo. 7, Michigan 3. Presentation of MSU football is made possible in part by Oldsmobile, featuring the Cutlass Calais and the new Quad 4 engine. Oldsmobile quality. Feel it. Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts, who have the right tools, training, and genuine GM parts to help you keep that great GM feeling. And Auto Owners Insurance Company, for all your life, home, car, and business insurance needs. Available through your local independent auto owner's agent, listed in the yellow pages under insurance.
nature travels to the Scottish Highlands, a windswept world of rugged beauty, home to one of the most spectacular birds of prey, the golden eagle. There's no mistaking that imperious stare or the sleek mane whose color gives these magnificent birds their name. The golden eagle is Britain's biggest native bird of prey. The wingspan exceeds the height of most tall men, enabling the eagle to sail over the huge areas of its home range with minimum effort. On the ground, it can appear awkward and ungainly, but flight transforms the golden eagle into a creature of matchless grace. This, then, is the lonely world of the high tops and the wild creatures who live there, the hunted and the hunters, and the hills where eagles fly. Tomorrow night at 8 on TV 23. Next on Nova. 25 years ago, the world came to the brink of nuclear war. The Cuban Missile Crisis brought to center stage the critical role of spying. Today, nuclear arsenals are many times more destructive. Can sophisticated intelligence tools help keep the peace in a dangerous world? Spy machines. That's next time on Nova. Tuesday night at 8 on TV 23. WKAR-TV East Lansing, Michigan State University. Well, Terry Braverman with Jim Adams and in it excitement-filled Spartan Stadium, a Big Ten game just like any other neighborhood brawl, and that's what George Perlis said it was going to be, an old country-style battle. In the first quarter, Michigan State won the first quarter, 7-3. to three. Let's give you some stats, Jim. Jamie Morris rushed for 45 yards in the first quarter. Lorenzo White rushed for 46 yards in the first quarter and got a touchdown. Jamie Morris, of course, and his team with a field goal, 31 yards. Focusing on the Michigan band, outplaying Michigan State. Well, Jim, you're looking at the Michigan marching band. Right now, however, the Michigan State band of football players has been marching through Michigan. Lorenzo White, 46 yards rushing and a touchdown in the first quarter. Jamie Morris, 45 yards rushing in the first quarter. A Heisman Trophy duel, as good as any in the country today. Some of the wild weirdo fans. I wonder how long it takes to wash that stuff off. I don't know. I was wondering the same thing. Of course, if Michigan State wins, he may not wash it off for a couple of days. Imagine going into class Monday morning. The professor said, oh, brother. Tell you, the first time Michigan State ever beat Michigan in 1913, they canceled classes on Monday morning. Maybe the team will ask them to do the same thing. If it, <laughs> yeah, it holds up, but we got a long ways to go on this one today. Second down, Demetrius Brown, the quarterback, eye formation. There's the fake handoff to Morse, and Demetrius Brown throws a little sideline pass out here, and it is to uh, his fullback that time, Jared Bunch from Ashtabula, Ohio, and Bunch uh, fights his way up to about the 35-yard line, maybe That's a little bit over the 35. Well, Jim, a nice tackle a moment ago by Kurt Larson by the ankle, and now Michigan with a opportunity for a third down conversion, needing two yards. Yeah, and Percy Snow has just left the ball game injured for Michigan State. Didn't look like it was serious. He was able to walk off, but he was shaken up. McMurtry in motion. Demetrius Brown, Jamie Morse, hands it off. No, Morse keeps it, and he is stopped here at about the 35. They lost about a yard. Good defensive play that time. Derek Reed, number six. Jim, Brian, how about this one? Brian Jones, number 32. Is that the number I yep, saw? that's right. Replacing Percy Snow, a middle linebacker who has not had a down in his career, and that was a big play by the Spartan defense again to force a punting opportunity. What's the story on Brian Jones? Well, he's from Akron, Ohio, and only a freshman, Terry. Wow. Yep, eligibility-wise. So Marty Robbins, who got a punt over 50 yards a moment ago, is set to kick again. He's standing at his own 20. Andre Risen standing at the 11 -man uh, front. opposite 20. Oh, I love High it. pass from center. And this time, not that good of a kick. Wobbles up in the air. Risen takes it at the 20, 25. And Risen stretches to about the 20, let's see where they'll put it down, to about the 23-yard line, maybe. I'll tell you, Jim, you say not too good a kick, but you know, it just hung, and it hung, yes, it and did. it hung. We move ahead to action later in the second quarter. Okay, operating with a first and 10. Oh, Brown is going to be chased back, and Buddy had him and drops him. Oh, a sack way back here to the 37-yard line. Oh, what a great rush by John Buddy. And he actually tripped, you know, Jim. 
Demetrius Brown gained his footage. He let Buddy go by, but the momentum, I think the breeze of Buddy <laughs> knocked him over because John really didn't get a good hand on him. See, he grabs and misses. He said, oh, and then all of a sudden, as he tries to gain his footing, he just stumbles and falls. And boy, Kurt Larson was about to unload a 16-yard sack for John Buddy out of Kansas City, whose dad, of course, Ed Buddy, played at Michigan State. Man was a great pro, pro player uh, later on. Looks a lot like his dad. Getting to look more like his dad all the time. Okay, second down, long, long yardage for Michigan now. This time they go back to that split backfield. Brown, a little delay, and he doesn't gain anything. He tries to come right up the middle, and it's Buddy again, number 87. What a game he's playing today. Yeah, but I'll tell you who made that play, Jim. He, he fooled Brown, Tim Moore. He stepped up into the middle, and then as they snapped the ball, watch 42 right here, move up. You're not looking at the man I'm talking about, but he'll see him move up, and I think it distracts him. See? He starts to make a charge, so they double team on Moore, and that allows Buddy to come in. 36-yard line of Michigan. Boy, Bo says, I had the big play. Colasar got me the big one, and then we're just going backwards. Third and 27. Well, you know, Bo warned the uh, Michigan fans. He said, you know, I thought they'd come and beat Iowa last week. You fellas didn't think they would happen. But this good ball club, Brown is back to throw again. They almost get him from behind. He throws an, an uh, intercepted by John Miller at the 30s. 40, 45 for Miller. Miller is at the 50-yard line on the 45 of Michigan. Flag is down after the play. Interception by John Miller, but a flag is down. Probably a clip, but Michigan State should retain possession of the ball. Jim Kemmerling is getting the call from the uh, other uh, back judge right now. And you see John Miller, I believe his first interception. First interception of the year, sorry. Uh, of the year, or maybe his career. John Miller, junior defensive back out of Farmington Hills, just returned that interception, 36 yards. And the Spartans have the ball now, first and 10 at their own 33. The first turnover of the game. Bobby McAllister, the pressure is on. Bobby unloads it here, the sets up the screen to Lorenzo White, gets a block from Cato. Lorenzo is up to the 45, 47 yard line, first down. Boy, are they charging now. The Spartan team is inspired, and the crowd, I think, is helping Michigan State gain the confidence. They are sensing something that would be in the minor way of an upset, even though it's still early in the ballgame. 47 yard line. So that's about a 14 yard pickup by Bobby McAllister on Lorenzo White. Good running by number 34. And McAllister today, Jim, remember what was he, two for 10 against Iowa? He is four out of five, 51 yards already in this game. Okay, Spartans about three yards away from midfield. Lorenzo White trying to get to midfield, and he goes out of bounds just shy, or maybe just over it. And a yellow flag goes down again. I don't know if that Looks was. Looks like it's gonna be holding again. Bobby McAllister looks on now. He's facing first and 20 after a 10-yard holding penalty against his line, the sixth penalty of the game already. Spartans are averaging 74 yards a game, penalty-wise, something that George Furlow said. Oh, Jim, I don't know why he turned. What a great run by Lorenzo. All he had to run north and south, and he tried to be cute. 47 yards on a big, big play. Didn't even play last year, and he only got 47 yards his sophomore year. Yeah, David Arnold, number 15, uh, put some pressure on him, uh, forced him to make a cut, and then Michigan was able to catch him from behind. So the Spartans already leading 7-3, to 7.39 to go here, when the John Mulligan uh, closes in very fast on him. You know, I'm reminded of O.J. Simpson when he ran for John McKay, and he carried the ball 35 and 40 times, and they said, aren't you worried about him carrying the ball that much? McKay had the great response, why? It's not that heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and Lorenzo's already carried it 12 times in this ball game, but he's the kind of player, the more he touches it, the better he gets with it. And Blake Ezor, you saw watching on the sidelines, the reserve tailback. Well, the way Michigan State's defense is playing, Michigan knows uh -oh. the value of this, and oh, McAllister's going to be sacked. Back to the 25-yard line, a great play by Mark Messner. Yep. He's a great one from Hartland, Michigan, 248-63, a defensive tackle, number 60. He's a fellow that the Spartans were worried about, and he was able to break through on McAllister That's and drop him at the 22. A uh, little bit of uh, trickery in the defensive play of Michigan that time, and they blew by the blockers. And you see, Bobby didn't have a chance to even make a decision. He had to eat the football. At the 22-yard line, it's third down and 16 yards to go with 5 or 6.20 to go in the first half. John Langwell limbering up the leg along the sideline. Now timeout, Michigan yep. State. Timeout called. The Spartans up 7-3 to three with uh, 6.18 left in the first half. 
Well, Jim Adams and Spartans are faced with a big here, third and 16 at the Michigan 22. Okay, Bobby McAllister has uh, those back, hands it off for oh. reverse and all, and it does not work that time to Bernard Wilson, and he's dropped way back on the 35, and now they're almost out of field goal. Yeah, they are. Yep. That's to be a 52-yard attempt, but we still might try it. I don't know. Boy, that was a great play. Was it 96? John Herman, defensive tackle, and uh, the reverse just did not develop to Bernard Wilson. So, Lango will try it. It'll be a 52-yard field goal attempt. And there you see again the great tackle for a loss. Both defensive teams are teeing off now. And as we said, turned into a defensive struggle. Langlow, this would be his longest of the year. Montgomery spots it, and Langlow gives it a boot. It is headed in that direction, but it is going to be short. Way to the right and short. And so it is not good. And so with 528, Michigan draws new breath again. They trail Michigan State uh, seven to three with uh, a little over five to play here in the first half. But disappointed, John Langlow leaves the field. Well, now that the uh, audience at home knows, of course, the Tigers won their first playoff game in the American League Championship. Now the Spartan Stadium fans can concentrate on this great football game. Well, both defenses can come to play. Michigan State was down to the Michigan 14-yard line and got pushed all the way back out of field goal range. So Michigan takes over at their own 35. Well, and they've got time on the clock to try to come back and get in this ball game. They're not far out of it right now. Wishbone attack again, both fullbacks are in there, Bunch and Webb. Hand off goes to Jamie Morris. Oh, Mark Nichols wraps his arms right around him at the 35-yard line. Mark Nichols, defensive player of the week in the Iowa victory, is he fired up? There he is, senior out of Bloomfield Hills. He said, we finally arrived. This is our senior year and our chance to really brag around the state. Birmingham, or Bloomfield Hills High School, an intense football player. Fifth year senior. You look at Colasar, their big play guy, getting the call from the sideline over on the maize and blue side. Intense. One of the strongest men in the weight room, Mark Nichols. No gain on the play, so it's still second down, 10 yards to go, Michigan. Again, same formation, McMurtry split out a little bit to the right-hand side. Demetrius Brown looks for a receiver, he throws long, intended for Colazar, and it's overthrown. Derek Reed and John Miller were both covering back on the 15-yard line, but Brown threw it too far. Well, you know, we didn't have a lot to compare these two teams, Jim, with Notre Dame having defeated Michigan in the first ball game by the score of 26-7 to in Ann Arbor. Notre Dame beat Michigan State 31 to 8 and uh, two opposite ways to get to this game Michigan playing a relatively easy schedule Washington State Long Beach State Wisconsin the Spartans now playing their fifth top 20 team in the country having the hard route with Southern Cal Notre Dame Florida State Iowa and they're both 1 and 0 in the Big Ten that's what counts right now here's a big play right here otherwise Michigan has to punt and give the ball back to the Spartans and may be able to work the clock down to halftime Brown needs 10 yards Brown looks, he throws over the line. Intercepted. intercepted again by John Miller, his second of the ball game at the 45 of Michigan. Well, there's a big play there for the second interception of the day for John Miller at the Michigan 45-yard line. He stepped right in front of the intended receiver and picked that one off. That's a nifty steal by John Miller. And here you see the lines drawn by Bob Greasy this afternoon when they televised the game. John Miller at one of the safety spots in the middle of your screen. Watch him move up. See right at the S. He'll jump right in front alertly and catch that ball. Spartans at the Michigan 45. The second turnover of the day and both re interceptions by John Miller. Okay, we're down to four and a half minutes to go in this first half. In motion goes Mike Sargent. Pitch back comes here to Lorenzo White. Lorenzo's getting run 40. He's down to the 35, 34 yard line. First down, Michigan. Michigan State. I think it's going to be a first down. It looks like it from here. Oh, yeah, he got it. Boy, Lorenzo is just running, Jim, with instant energy. His acceleration from moment of touching of the ball is by far the best this year. How many yards, J.D., in the first half? 111 in the first half against Michigan. Lorenzo White just passed Ricky Bell and Walter Payton on most yards gained in a career. There you see the time remaining of about 4.14, the last time you saw the clock in the bottom corner. McAllister wants Josevich off the line. He wants him to go in motion now, which... For the coast-to-coast, coast, Lorenzo White 
He had 166 yards last Saturday at Iowa, while Jamie Morris rolled up 188 against Long Beach State, or Wisconsin. But Lorenzo is coming out now, and he ought to get quite a hand. He ought to be tired, but look at him. It's the first time he's shown any emotion. He pumped the hand in the air. He never shows emotion. So the Spartans have the fleet-footed Blake Ezor in the ball game for the first time today. And they've got James Moore, the Lansing High School product, in there with the fullback. He's in a deep spot in that I formation. In high school, and he's had to pump iron to get up to the fullback spot. And uh, he's down to the eight, and the Spartans can use the clock, get in there, and uh, not give Michigan much of a chance to have the ball again before the half here. Well, a second down, and Michigan State can make a first down if they can move that ball down to the three. He's still in there. Sergeant goes in motion. McAllister, Ezor, and Ezor dives ahead to the six-yard line, almost to the five. They're going to give him the six. It's going to be three yards away from a first down. They've got two chances to go three yards for the first down. Well, what's nice is when Lorenzo does get tired after having carried the ball so much, you've got a burner in there in Blake Ezor. Now, Lorenzo's caught his breath, and uh, Ezor comes out. Ezor had picked up an average of 43 yards a game, averaging 3.9. That was his first carry in the ball game today. Jim, here's another important call. The clock is running. It's third down and three at the six. You've got to get something on the board here. Okay, third down and six. Once again, Mike Sargent goes in motion. And this time, Lorenzo White takes the ball. Lorenzo's at the five. Lorenzo's down to the three. It's going to be close to a first down. I, I think, think he got, got it. it. That's all you need is the first down. They're going to mark it at the two. And Bo Schembechler is storming the sidelines on the west east side. Lorenzo got it. Alan, Alan Bishop, a defensive back in there, number 10 now for Michigan, made the tackle. David Hull, number 74. He's paid his dues, fifth-year senior. He's also trying to get the crowd up and get fired up here. Andre Risen leaves the ball game, Terry, and Joe Pugh comes in. So it gives the Michigan State a little bit more blocking. They've got two fullbacks in there on the wishbone, Q and James Moore, along with Lorenzo White. First down, Michigan State at the three. Here comes Lorenzo trying to circle the corner. Touchdown, Michigan State. Well, they're letting it out now. They're letting the wolf out. Nice Lansing. Two touchdowns in the first half by Michigan State. And they are letting the green and white balloons go up. Two touchdowns for Lorenzo White. Bobby McAllister acts like it's just a day at the office. And the Spartans go in front with a drive after the interception by John Miller. Watch the blocking up front. Joe Pugh, James Moore. Lorenzo saw the corner, and he dives for it. Okay, Montgomery to hold and John Langlow, who was successful on booting the extra point after the first touchdown. Kick is up, and it's up, and it is good. And the clock stops again. 2.16 to play in the first half. The Spartans now 14, and Michigan 3. Lorenzo White. Two minutes and 16 still to go in the first half. Langlow boots it off here for Michigan State. Jamie Morris and Jefferson. Well, they almost collide. It winds up with Jefferson at the 20, 25, and down he goes at a gang tackle at about the 28-yard line. Okay, Michigan with the ball. First play from the scrimmage after the kickoff. Demetrius Brown fakes the handoff. He's going to be hit. No, he throws and uh, completes it to Colazar. A great grab out here at the 41-yard line. They try to wrestle the ball away from him, but uh, Colazar had the completion of the 41. He well, is I tell tough. you what, I like that call, Jim. You wonder if Michigan's going to sit on the ball? No, sir. Demetrius Brown backpedals, and Colazar, look at him take an angle and then have to reach back for the ball. What a catch. That ball was badly thrown. Well, that Colazar is some athlete. They yeah, ran right away from John Miller that time, and uh, Tim Moore couldn't quite duck in in front of the ball, as uh, Miller had done previously to get the interception. So Michigan has a first down, exactly two minutes to go. There's time. They need a couple well, of big plays. The thing is, right now, you've got to believe that Michigan only feels they can move the ball in the air, because they haven't been good on the ground against the Spartan defense. Demetrius Brown hands off Jamie Morris, a quick opener, and they wrap Morris up at about the 44-yard line. Percy Snow is in there. Kurt Larson again, number three is in there and at the bottom of the pile for Michigan State Tim Moore again and Sumner number 64. Now the clock is running. Michigan does have all three timeouts left. Michigan State has two. Jamie Morris 16 carries 51 yards in the first half. 
You look at Pat Shermer, offensive center, and co-captain down there for Michigan State, number 60. I tell you, we're glad to have the lights out here at the ballpark tonight because it, uh, it's very cloudy and dark. Demetrius Brown, Shemansky comes in on him. He still throws long, intended for Colazar, and it's incomplete. Oh, back there covering was Todd Crum and oh. Derek Reed at the three-yard line. Todd Crum did an excellent job, Jim. He reached right over the top. The only thing you worry is you don't make the contact. But uh, Todd Crum, an outfielder in baseball, was covering along with Derek Reed. That's double coverage. Stops the clock. I tell you, Bo Schembechler is not going conservative here at, no, the, no. at the end of the half. I, I'll I tell like you that. that. No. He's going right after it. Now the clock starts again after the, uh, or at least the play clock starts. Well, a nice defense by Michigan State. Good yeah. coverage. Crum and Reed. Here's Crum kind of behind him and Reed in front. Good comparison. Lorenzo White, 16 carries, 138 yards. Jamie Morris, 16 carries, 51 yards. He's winning that battle. Okay, Demetrius Brown again. This time he's got some time and he throws over the middle and completes it to McMurtry. Down to about the Michigan State 45. He's pushed back to the 47-yard line. And even further, they're going to allow it Let's to see 47. where they spot it. If they give him the yardage, he's got the first down. Uh, first down, Michigan. McMurtry, McMurtry against Johnson. Craig Johnson in there again at the corner. Yeah, uh, there's the bump. And then he cuts back in, looks for the uh, ball, and gets it from Brown. Well, Demetrius Brown hasn't done badly, Jim. He's uh, 7 out of 13 passing for 81 yards in the first half. Bo says, come on, let's go. The clock's running. 55 seconds to go. Michigan does have those three timeouts left, and we may see him use it. To Brown a little mixed up on the play that he wants to call here, and Michigan taking some extra time to get it underway. He fakes the handoff. This time in comes a summon. The throw is oh. overthrown. Almost, almost picked off. Intended for McMurtry. Harlan Barnett was there. Yeah, yeah. Harlan Barnett should have had that ball. See him? He said, boy, I've been close, but that doesn't count. The clock stops now. 41 seconds to go. Michigan with second and 10 at the Spartan 47. They're definitely out of field goal range. Bo says, what are we going to do? Poise, confidence. <laughs> That's a great shot on Bobby McAllister's wrist. The quarterback for Michigan State looks at the clock anxiously. Michigan did not take a timeout. Well, a fortunate uh, Terry there. They didn't have to on the incompleted forward pass. So that put one on the bank here that they may still have to use. But it's second down and 10 now for Michigan. Backpedaling is Demetrius Brown again, and he throws just before they make contact, and it is way overthrown. Way overthrown out of bounds here on the sideline. Intended for Callaway, who's in there now. Chris Callaway, number two, the sophomore split in from Chicago. George Perlis, you can see the intensity on his face as he looks down at one of his assistant coaches, and Bo, ready to send in the play, has still not used a timeout. He's going to go right into the bank with him, I guess, and take him into the locker room with him. Well, he's just sent McMurtry back into the ball game. The young man who played baseball for Michigan last year drafted a high by the Boston Red Sox, and uh, instead of going to baseball right away, he decided to play college football. For Michigan on third down, Jim, they're four out of nine thus far in the first half on third down conversions. Okay, the crowd really noisy here, hoping that the Spartans can take that 14-3 to into the locker room with them. Brown fakes the oh. hand off to Jamie Morris. Brown rolls out to the left. Brown throws the left-hander, and it's intercepted again. And it's John Miller with his third interception of the day out to the 37. Oh, I'll tell you what. John Miller is going to be Defensive Player of the Week in the nation. Three interceptions in one game, and Jim Elliott was all over John Buddy. If they don't throw a flag for holding, Jim, there's something wrong. Jim Elliott fell on top of John Buddy and tackled him from behind. But it doesn't matter. The turnover goes to Michigan State with 26 seconds to go in the half. And John Miller, some kind of first half he's had, the junior who was recruited very heavily by Michigan, steps in front of the ball thrown by Demetrius Brown again. 11-yard return they gave John Miller. Three turnovers all credited to John Miller. Boy, Miller's timing has just been near perfection out here today. Okay, first down Michigan State. The very closing moments now of the first half. They go a little bit conservative, give off to Lorenzo White, and he spins over one man, gets up to about the 40, 41-yard line. Does White with uh, 18 seconds to play, 17, the clock moving. Now, they're not even going to run another play because you can fumble and anything can happen. And Michigan's they're going to go coaches in. have already gone There's to John Miller. Run. What a great first half. Three interceptions, and one of them led to a touchdown drive. And the Spartans will be mighty happy when they take this lead over Bo Schembechler in the locker room by the score of 14-3. 
presentation of MSU football is made possible in part by Oldsmobile, featuring the Cutlass Calais and the new Quad 4 engine. Oldsmobile quality. Feel it. Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts, who have the right tools, training, and genuine GM parts to help you keep that great GM feeling. I kind of picked Michigan State spirits up in our first drive that Michigan had. And they pushed them back and didn't push it in for a touchdown. We were down the two-yard line, so I think that was a turning point. But kind of the nice thing is Sheridan did a two-run homer, and the Tigers are ahead and won it, you know. Don, that's what I wanted to ask you about. You were the director of player personnel in 1968 when the Tigers won the World Series, and you were telling some stories about that. Do you get the feeling this is the same kind of club? It could happen all over again? Well, the only difference is, in those days, you know, you developed your own. And other than probably really Trammell, Brookins, and Whitaker, most of the fellas at Morris don't come up with a farm system anymore. You know, you pick guys out. It's still the key to it. But it's not quite the same because everybody but Norm Cash came through our farm system. Our people on the screen right now are looking at Gil Haley, a local uh, Spartan supporter, and uh, but they're listening to Don Lund from the University of Michigan and uh, a longtime fundraiser and friend. But, you know, Don, there was a very nice moment last night when we honored Don Canham, the retiring athletic director of the University of Michigan. And I know you know how important he's been to athletic success over the years in, in Michigan. Well, he has. You know, Michigan's only had five athletic directors in their history, and Don carried on the fine tradition set by Yost and Chrysler and some of those people, and he's going to be missed. Don, they just showed a shot on the screen of Bo Schembechler. What's the, does Bo want to be the athletic director? Well, I really can't answer that. I think they have to ask him, but uh, he certainly would be a guy that's qualified and could do a job. Don, hang around for a minute. Jim, describe the action. We'll chat for a moment or two with Don Lund. Okay, Jeanette kicks off. He's over, takes it at about the five, and he is spilled up at the 11 yard line. A little mix up there by Michigan State. Jim. All right, here's the first play for the Spartan offensive series, at, starting at their own 13, Jim. Okay, not real good field position for Michigan State to begin this second half. Mike Sargent in motion. There's the pitch, Lorenzo White. Lorenzo has to cut in, and he is squashed at the 11. He loses a couple of yards on the play. Don uh, recently uh, announced that Michigan, Michigan State, with a joint effort on a basketball a network uh, this winter. And that's got to be a first, and, a, and a, what really will benefit the whole state of Michigan, all the fans. Well, I would think, and I was talking to some people up in Traverse City when I played up in the golf tournament, and they were very pleased, and I think they had Michigan, Michigan State on about uh, five times in that, and they were very pleased and was able to sell that package. Now that's going to be a good one, a winner for both schools. And uh, that's the way it should be here in the state of Michigan as we look at the Spartans now deep in their own territory with Michigan teeing off. Yeah, second down, 11 yards to go now. Michigan playing tough defense. There's Lorenzo White on a quick opener. He slides up to about the 14, but picks up only about three before Michigan shuts the door. One final question for Don Lund from... Uh, the University of Michigan, who's been a longtime uh, fundraiser over there and good friend of Don Canham. And looking ahead, uh, Don, you don't have an easy one next week, but you do have Iowa at home. I don't think anything's easy once you get into the conference, and it's kind of unpredictable this year. For example, did you hear the score today between Indiana and Ohio State? Now, who'd ever think of that? So maybe there's more parity coming into the conference. I hope so. But, Don, again, thanks for stopping by and for all you've done for the Wolverines. I know they appreciate you. Fine. Thanks very much. Okay. Don Lund. Former Tiger and Jim, the Spartans now face with a third and long. Yeah, third and long, and if uh, they don't make it, they got a punt from deep in their own territory. So Michigan playing into uh, Michigan State's hands here early. Lorenzo White not being able to go anywhere. Stopped at about the line of scrimmage, the 13 or 14 yard line. And so the Michigan Wolverine defense did what it had to do. It stopped Michigan State on its first drive. Ezor was only able to run it back to the 11 yard line. And the Spartans could only advance it a couple of yards after that. And so now Montgomery will have to come in. And he'll be standing back at his own goal line. Colazar goes all the way back to the Michigan 36 to wait for the kick. Montgomery in the first half had two punts, but averaged 49 and a half yards. He's going to have to get a good one off here, or Michigan's going to have excellent field position. Low pass from center. Montgomery booms it away, and it bounces. Colazar's going to pick it up on the bounce to 45, and he's down. Oh, I thought he was going to break away there for a moment, but he stopped at the 45, 46-yard line. And Michigan, a pretty good field position uh, compared to Michigan State on its first drive of the second half. In the first half, the University of Michigan had... 28 yards rushing on the ground and 81 yards passing. So their total offense was 109 yards to Michigan State's 197 because Michigan State had 146 net rushing and 51 passing. So the Spartan offense did dominate in a sense because their defense dominated. Now Michigan with excellent field position to start their first possession of the third quarter trailing Michigan State 14 to 3. 
Big sequence, uh, Terry, for Michigan State's uh, defense to reestablish itself here over Michigan here at the early moments of the second half. Demetrius Brown has bunch at fullback. Jamie Morris at tailback. There goes Jamie Morris, his first run. And uh, he's able to sneak through this time, and he breaks through a hole and gets up over the 50 or just about to the 50-yard line with it. Morris had uh, 16 rushes for 50 yards in the first half. Well, he had a great first quarter, Terry, and then he sort of tailed yeah, off. Now, now Michigan goes to the wishbone. Both these ball clubs have uh, shown us the wishbone uh, quite frequently today in this ball game. This time they uh, fake the handoff to Bunch. Demetrius Brown carries, and he's ridden down by Mark Nichols and Tim Moore with some help from Percy Snow. And he picks up maybe about three down to Michigan State 47. And the Big Ten games next week will find Michigan State at Northwestern, Iowa at Michigan, Indiana at Minnesota, Ohio State at Purdue, and Wisconsin at Illinois. That's next Saturday. That was Jeff Brown bringing in the play, their tight end, 6'4, 238 yard, 238 pound junior. They haven't gone to their tight end yet today, and Michigan in the past against Michigan State has hurt them with passing to the tight end. Yeah, they've got Brown and uh, the number two man, Derek Walker. I think they went to him once or twice there in the first half. Not much success. Here's Jamie Morris again, and he's able to turn the corner before he's bumped out of bounds right in front of the Michigan State bench area again. They had him hemmed in, but he turns that corner. Well, he is a great runner. There's no question about it. You know, he's not that fast, Uri, but he's so, so quick. Very, very quick. Well, you know, when he broke in, he seemed so slim and looked like he would be vulnerable and be easily injured. But he, what he is, what I marvel at is his durability for that young man on the small frame. Five foot seven, but he does pack 183 pounds upon the frame. We're 11 16 to go here in the third period. If you've just joined us, Michigan State leads Michigan 14 to 3. Michigan has the ball in Michigan State territory. It's their first offensive series of the second half. Brown hands off quick opener to Jamie Morris this time. Again, Percy Snow clamps him down along with some help from Nichols again and Joe Bergen, number 45, after Morris goes down to about the 43. Well, I'll tell you, there must have been some intense talking as you look at Percy Snow, who in every Michigan State game this year has been the leading tackler from his middle linebacker spot, only a sophomore out of Canton, Ohio, and boy, does he wrap up Jamie Morris. But both coaches, I'm sure, had plenty to say to their charges uh, about the second half and what this means, even to a guy from Canton, Ohio. He knows the importance of this one. Gain of only a yard on that play, so it's second now now and still nine big ones for Michigan. Michigan uh, starting the game a second half as they did the ball game, staying primarily on the ground. Although Brown fades back to throw this time, and he throws long down the middle, and it's picked off this time by Todd Crum. Crum is up to the 25, 30 yard line, and Michigan State's fourth interception of the day as John Miller had three in the first half, and now Crum picks off Brown in the second half. And a flag may be down, Jim. I don't know where it came from, JD. Well, maybe inverting. It just fell out of a pocket, perhaps. But there's Todd Crum, who has had many key interceptions in his career. You look at Jim Kemmerling, he just signals first down. Four turnovers by the University of Michigan, a very uncharacteristic turnovers. And there you see the replay as Demetrius Brown throws it way over the receiver. A nice fingertip grab by Todd Crum. Okay, dead ball, personal foul against Michigan and Michigan State. They nullify each other, offset each other. The Spartans take over at their own 30. On the fourth, interception on Demetrius Brown. Remember, of course, they've got Taylor and the wings as Gary Moeller is giving him the talking to now. Crum came into the season, Terry, with nine interceptions in his career. He's been tough. Okay, Michigan State's first down play. It's Lorenzo White, and oh boy, Lorenzo is uh, dropped down by Michigan. Stacked up. Yep, number 15, David Arnold, the weak side corner, was able to bring him down. Well, he went head to head with Mr. Arnold, and Ar he says, if you're gonna take me on, take me on, and Arnold limps off in the game. But remember, he's the one that put a hit on uh, Willie Boyer earlier in the game. But Lorenzo put a good one on him, and he's limping, but he's staying in. Loss of two, second and 12. Well, he's the guy to throw in front of right now because he is, uh, he's gimpy. Michigan State with second down. McAllister looks in that direction. Now Bobby cuts in, gets one good block, and is sort of tackled from behind as he crosses up to about the 27-yard line, maybe the 28. So Bobby McAllister carries and uh, a flag on this play. You know, Jim, what we, as we watch the call, holding again, Michigan State's line. 
they may decide to decline it because it'll be third and 12. It'll be an interesting decision on Michigan's part, but the, the Michigan State game plan, I think, is working in trying to make Michigan throw deep. And in doing that, it gives your defensive backs a chance to set up and try to make that interception. And they've been able to do it four times today, all, most all of them, 15, 20 yards downfield. The holding call is declined by Michigan. So McAllister looks to the sideline. And his offensive strategists, of course, the offensive coordinators, Morris Watts, receivers coach, Charlie Baggett, running back coach, Larry Bielat. And the play is in. Spartans lead 14-3. McAllister in the first half only tried five passes, but completed four for 51 yards. So let's see what they try here. Third down and 12. McAllister, it's a pitch to Lorenzo White. Lorenzo finds some running room up the middle, and uh, finally he's hit by number five, Eric Campbell, who slows him down. And they pin him down short of the 40-yard line, so it will not be a first down. No, but it's close. But it's close. He, he needed another yard and a half, did Lorenzo, but that's a good run. Well, he gets the Spartans in very good field position now for Montgomery's punting leg. Jim, the interception by Todd Crum a moment ago, his third of this year, 12th of his career, as you look at Lorenzo, stutter and jitterbug up the field. Five guys to bring him down. Okay, Colasar is awaiting this punt inside his own 20-yard line. Montgomery is standing at his own 25. Good pass from center this time. Ooh. And Montgomery booms it. Colasar waits for it at the 16. Colasar darts to the sideline. Oh, they're going to have it. Carlos Jenkins, Who else, the number Terry? one man on the punt coverage team. He is an awesome athlete. He has not he lived up to the coach's potential yet, but boy, is he coming. A young man, number 51, Carlos Jenkins, who just keeps improving with every game out of Boynton Beach, Florida, a freshman, is down always first downfield. Good coverage on a good kick. How many yards, J.D.? Montgomery's. Oh, we're getting the official attendance today. 77,424. Don Canham's last year as the athletic director of the University of Michigan. Don may not be liking what he's seeing today. In fact, he sometimes doesn't even stay for the ball game. That's right. <laughs> well, Jim Adams, Michigan starts their drive deep in their own territory at the 12-yard line after great coverage on a 46-yard punt by Greg Montgomery. Michigan just has not been able to sustain uh, much of a drive here since the early going in this ball game. Hand off this time, Jamie Morris, and he's pushed back. He gains two. He gets up to about the 14-yard line, and that is going to be all as he has really hit hard. Well, see, Percy Michi Snow again along with Joe Berg. Well, see, Michigan's in a quandary now, Jim, because their deep passing game has been intercepted four times, and they can't run the ball uh, in short in the middle. So they either have to go to the outside or resort to some screens or something, reverses, to try and shake up this Michigan State defense, which is now gaining extreme confidence with every play. And there you see Demetrius Brown, the man on the spot at the QB position for Michigan. We're about midway through the third quarter, 7.46, the time remaining on the clock as Michigan sends two wide receivers out right. Brown passes just, and he completes it out here to his tight end, Jeff Brown from Shaker Heights, Ohio. He was almost hit just before he threw that ball. Well, that's the first pass completed to the tight end. First down. And uh, that's the way they, in the past, have been able to move the ball on Michigan State. Brown had caught uh, four passes for 79 yards coming into the ball game today. You know, Brown really wasn't named the starting quarterback until, what, they alternated in the first game with Taylor. And he's just now kind of perhaps easing himself into understanding that he's the one with all the leadership in his pocket. Yep, on that play, uh, there's a running play there. The previous play was Demetrius Brown to Jeff Brown. And now they try a running play, which uh, doesn't gain them too much, maybe a yard up to the 26-yard line, and that is all. Bunch, the ball carrier. Again, Percy Snow was there, and Martin Nichols was there. And uh, Todd Crum back from the secondary. Here comes McMurtry back into the game. Uh, he's an exciting receiver and with great potential now. Second nine. The clock running, under six minutes to go. Third quarter at Spartan Stadium on a gray October 10. Getting dark enough now so that the lights that are on uh, here all, almost across the line comes Buddy, but he gets back in time. Here's the handoff. Oh. Oh, Jamie Morse bounces away, but still. Harlan uh, Barnett. Harlan Barnett got him right around the ankles and that time wouldn't let him go. Harlan Barnett came charging in on a blitz from his corner position. 
He didn't even have the starting job at the beginning of the season. Lanier Payton started there, but Barnett, you just could not keep him out of the lineup. Sophomore out of Cincinnati. He understands the intensity of this football game. Yeah, Barnett starts at the right corner. He also is the number one backup for John Miller at the strong safety in case we would have to use him there. Okay. Well, now they bring in a pass prevent. Jason Ridgway and a couple other new players come in from Michigan State. Officials call timeout. There's a huddle over there on the 25-yard line between the officials. And uh, they had not started the play clock yet. I don't know what the problem is. Now they're going back to the Michigan side and going to say, all right, let's huddle again. In this ball game, Demetrius Brown is 8 out of 18 passing for 91 yards. And Bo Schembechler says, come on, guys, we had the play called. What happened? Now, Tim Moore went to the sidelines for the Spartans, the linebacker. Now he's back in. Yeah, Demetrius Brown also has thrown four interceptions. I add that. Okay, again, a big play for Michigan, meeting the big yardage with third down. Spartan defense comes charging on Demetrius Brown, who throws and completes the pass to Colazar, and he almost breaks loose. Again, this time, Greg Johnson and uh, Derek Reed got him, but that's a first down up at the Michigan 48, almost 49 yard good, line. Good blocking by the offensive line by Michigan. He stayed right in the pocket. There you see the route run by the receiver, Colasar. But uh, the pocket, watch how it forms around. Well, you can't see it now as you're watching the route of the receiver. He was covered deep, but still held on to the football, Colasar. He nice. is a big play guy. Yeah, nice throw by Demetrius Brown to hit him right on the run, led him perfectly, and uh, that has to do a little bit for Demetrius Brown's confidence. Keeps Michigan's hands in the football, first and ten. If they strike next, they're right back in this ball game. Brown's going to throw again a side ladder intercepted by John Miller, his fourth of the afternoon. Oh, brother, now we go to the record books. John Miller, four interceptions. He has been something else on defense. That's five pickoffs by Michigan State's defense in this game. Watch it again. John Miller, upper part of your screen, trying to defend. McMurtry is number one. Colazar is 40. And he sees him run the out. No, Miller is the short man and jumps high to get it. Bad throw by Brown. Jim, I can't imagine more than four interceptions in one game. Uh, three is the record. Uh, Jimmy Ellis against Oregon State and Jesse Thomas against Indiana. Jesse again and Johnny Polanchak. So we had four. But now John Miller holds that uh, record all right. by himself. There he is. Big John from Farmington, Farmington Hill. Hills Harris. A yep. blue chip recruit by Michigan State's coaching staff four years ago. And he's a red shirt, of course. He's still a junior. But John Miller moving over to that uh, safety spot. Now time is called. 5.36 to go in the third quarter. The Spartans leading Michigan 14-3. Well, there's John Miller, Jim, who just set a Michigan State record for four interceptions in one game. And the Michigan State team has five interceptions against Michigan today, tying another MSU team record, set in 79 against Northwestern. Okay, here's Lorenzo White, and Lorenzo is really trapped back on the 33-yard oh, line. He's down. There was a fumble after he hit the ground, and referee Jim Caverling says, no, sir. But it is still... Uh, a bad omen for the Spartan offense that they're losing ground to Michigan. That was a five-yard loss. Michigan happens to be teeing off. As you look at number nine, uh, Taylor warming up on the sideline for U of M. Michael Taylor, their now second-team quarterback. Demetrius Brown had just not been able to find his targets too many times today, and they've been more green jerseys than blue, maize and blue. Second and 15 now facing Bobby McAllister and company. Okay, Bobby with a quick handoff to James Moore this time. And James doesn't get very far. He gets a couple up to about the 36-yard line. Third and 12 now for the Spartans. Again, that wishbone leaves Michigan guessing a little bit about what's going to happen. Lorenzo White finds a little bit of running room and crashes up over the 40 to the 42-yard line. He's met there by big number 92 from Michigan. And uh, that's a player they have just put into the ball game. They had a couple of others there. Mallory was Cooper. there. Campbell was there. Cooper is in there now. Keith Cooper, me. outside linebacker. That's Greg Montgomery. How many times, J.D.? Let's check the stats here on his punts today. Lorenzo White, by the way, 25 carries for 153 yards rushing today. Okay, Michigan State, which has not been able to get the ball moving offensively here in the second half, has got to punt it again. And Montgomery booms it. A booming kick. And this is going to go over his head. Is it going to go into the end zone? Oh, it does. Just barely into the end zone. 
That was close. <laughs> Carlos <laughs> Jenkins, 51, does a cartwheel down there. The clock stops with 3.32 to go in the third quarter, and the Spartans so far leading in this Big Ten rivalry, 14 to 3. Well, you look at Michigan State's defensive line coach, Steve Furness, former great lineman for the Steelers, who's been calling those plays. He's talking on the phones upstairs. Jim, you know Michigan State's offense with no first downs in this third quarter. Michigan has really beaten them defensively, but the Spartan defense has also been tough with the interceptions by Crum and Miller in this quarter. Miller has tied a Big Ten record for interceptions in a ball game, and we'll have details on that one here in just a moment. Split backfield, uh, Demetrius Brown again. The rush is on. Can he get it away? Thomas Davis throws it into safety. Oh, oh, it should, oh, it should be. They're going to rule about the one inch line. No, it oh, had to be boy. in, Jimmy. The ball fell right on the goal line. It's got to be two points. I can't believe he didn't give that a safety. That is just awful. The ball fell right on the goal line. How could Jim Carroll not call that play? I'm sorry, my partiality is showing. But Jim, watch where the ball is. Travis Davis with great pursuit. Well, Kelsey well, covered it up. He rolled over on it, and Kemmerling said no. How can he decide on the one-inch line? It's a loss of 19 yards, I guess. Yeah, that really puts Michigan with its back up against the wall. Second down, about 30-some to go for the first down. They're running from their own end zone. He says he can't hear. He says play ball. Look, he went three times to Kemmerling. Now he has to call timeout. That'll bring Bo off the bench. Well, he'll be hot now. Look at him. Now he's going to show you something now. And Demetrius Brown had to waste a timeout there, and he says, what are you doing that for? 2.34 to go, third quarter. The Spartans are beating the Wolverines 14 to 3. Well, Jim, you can see a concern, Bo Schemmeckler. You want to know the reason why? They're rushing after three quarters is minus 30. Is that 33 plus 33 yards, J.D.? 33 yards. As all Michigan has been able to rush in almost three quarters of play with Jamie Morris and company. Okay, Michigan will try it again. It's second down still with those 30 yards to go. The ball there on the one-inch line. Demetrius Brown calls out the play from the wishbone. Demetrius carries it himself and gets out to about the one or one and a half yard line. It's I was going to mention only... a moment ago, Terry, that uh, Johnny Miller has tied a Big Ten record for most passes intercepted in a game. Uh, first set by Clarence Brad of Wisconsin against Minnesota in 1954, equaled by Paul Berry of Purdue against Wisconsin in 1976. Hasn't been done in the last 11 years. By the way, Mr. Brown has the ignominious record for Michigan. That ties a Michigan record, five interceptions thrown in one game the Michigan quarterback. Hey, we've gone to the record book about as often as we've gone yeah. in a long, long time. 1.58, yeah. you see there, the time remaining in the third quarter. We've had no change. The score at halftime still holds here, 14 to three. Now it's third down, and Demetrius Brown gives off. They're trying to break Jamie Morris free, and he does get up to about the eight yard line, but now they're gonna have to uh, punt the ball away. Yeah. Call upon the talented tour of Molly Robbins to boot it out of there. Martin defense gets a great hand. Well, they have played superb football today. The Michigan defensive line, Michigan State defensive line. There's Robbins coming in. This will be only his third punt, Jim. They've been 51 yards and 48 yards, and Risen back in the single return spot. Risen uh, at uh, the Michigan State 48-yard line. Robbins kicks it away. A high, oh. high kick. Great, great punt. Crowd work gets up as Ryzen takes it, 35, 40, 45. Ryzen stutter steps uh -oh. and he almost makes uh -oh. it, fumbles the ball, and Michigan's got it. Oh, boy. Well, that's one of the reasons some people will say that's why he had Todd Crum back there before. But this time, Andre Ryzen had the ball, and then he was shaken loose of it, and there's a big, big break for Michigan. Bishop, number 10, is the man, I think, who fell on the football. Alan Bishop, a defensive back. He fumbled, he recovered, actually fielded the ball okay, Jim. He yep. fumbled it after he tried to run back. He is stripped from the ball. Andre Risen, as you see, number 80, crunches in on him and strips him loose of the ball. And then uh, Bishop, I think number 10, will fall on it. He was stripped by Jeff Brown, the tight end. Okay, after the fumble recovery, Michigan with a big break has the ball in Michigan State territory. Here in the second half, Closing moments of the third quarter. 
There's the fake handoff. Brown keeps it himself, spins from one man, and then falls forward to the 45-yard line. And that's going to be a Travis Davis little man in himself that he didn't have him thrown for a loss. There you see, Travis. Yeah, he had him. But Brown got pretty a couple of shots on him before he gets up. He must be a durable young man to take a couple of hits like that. Demetrius Brown right at the 45-yard line. Give him a two-yard pickup. Travis Davis is mad. He, did, he had him in the backfield. A third period, almost history. Michigan has not been able to get into the end zone at all yet today. They have the one field goal in which they took a 3-0 lead in this ball game. This may be their best threat since that time. High formation call this time for Brown. Hand off again. Jamie Morris, little running room this time. He stopped and then hit. And, oh, he still squeaks forward to the 40-yard line. Great play by Jamie Morris. That'll be the last play of the third quarter at Spartan Stadium. 77,424 on hand. And the Spartans lead Michigan 14-3. Presentation of MSU football is made possible in part by Oldsmobile, featuring the Cutlass Calais and the new Quad 4 engine. Oldsmobile quality. Feel it. Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts, who have the right tools, training, and genuine GM parts to help you keep that great GM feeling. And Auto Owners Insurance Company, for all your life, home, car, and business insurance needs. Available through your local independent auto owner's agent, listed in the yellow pages under insurance. Nature travels to the Scottish Highlands, home to one of the most magnificent birds of prey, the Golden Eagle. From its earliest days through a gawky youth and a breathtaking first flight to become master of the skies. This, then, is the lonely world of the high tops and the wild creatures who live there, the hunted and the hunters, and the hills where eagles fly. Sunday night at 8 on TV 23. Next on Nova. 25 years ago, U.S. spy planes found Soviet missiles in Cuba. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States. Spy information then played a crucial role in the resolution of the crisis. Today, spy technology is much more advanced and nuclear arsenals are many times more destructive. Can sophisticated intelligence tools help keep the peace in a dangerous world? What can the new spy technology tell us? How much can we rely on spy machines? That's next time on NOVA. Tuesday night at 8 on TV 23. WKAR-TV East Lansing, Michigan State University. Let's start again. 15 minutes of football remaining in East Lansing Spartan Stadium. A gray October 10th, but what could be a bright day for Michigan State football fans. You know, of course, now at home uh, what happened this afternoon, but you're watching the replay as we do the announce on the tape live. And the Spartans are 15 minutes away from an upset. They have just, however, given up their first turnover of the game. A fumble by Andre Risen, recovered by Alan Bishop. And now Michigan will try to take advantage. Well, that is the longest timeout or change in quarters. Could be a Big Ten record right there for timeout time. There are five bowls here watching this game today. And both sides are watching both sides, obviously. Okay, it's McMurtry out to the left, and Colazar moves out to the right for Michigan. As the Mason Blue come on the attack. There's Demetrius Brown, fakes the handoff to Bunch, then pitches back here to... Uh, his fullback, Webb, and Webb is upended by Kurt Larson and Derek Reed. But he got the first down. Yeah, and he crossed the Michigan State 35 down to about the 33-yard line. First downs in the game, Michigan State 10, Michigan 12. And you just saw George Perlis uh, gulp there in the throat as Demetrius Brown hands off to Jamie Morris, and this time they've got him. About the line of scrimmage was all Jamie got to that time. He was hit by Percy Snow, John Miller came up, Tim Moore, and Joe Bergen was in there on the play. Joe gave way to uh, Jim Chemansky quite a bit in the Iowa game last week, but Bergen, and there's uh, Johnny Miller, number 44, who has already today tied the Big Ten record of four interceptions in one ball game. All right now, I tell you, the game is to be won or lost in those trenches. 32-yard line, Michigan. 
has four first downs in the second half. Michigan State, none. Second down, about nine for Michigan. Demetrius Brown holds it and pitches back to Jamie Morris, and this time Percy Snow drags him down, and he's got a first down, however. Down about the Michigan State 23-yard line. Oh, they're running the option, or the wishbone successfully now, as they're getting on the flanks. The Spartans' defense has got to get outside and contain him and push him back inside. Well, I tell you, Demetrius Brown doing a lot better job of faking, Terry. He's faking to at least one man and sometimes two before pitching that ball back. He fakes yep. to the fullback, then it looks like he's going to carry it himself, and then he gives to the trailer, Jamie Morris. Well, this is where you've got to make your adjustments defensively now. Okay, they spot the ball at the 21-yard line. Still a lot of playing time left in this Big Ten football game. Demetrius Brown, the quarterback. This time it's Jamie Morris again, and Jamie tries to hurdle a couple of players. Tim Moore was there to help trip him up. He's down to about the 18-yard line, maybe. Well, Michigan running the wishbone and option successfully. They've moved the ball to the Spartan 19, second down. Second down, again, another nine-yard to go situation for the Mays and Blue. Longer count this time by Brown. Gives it this time to his fullback, and uh, he doesn't have anywhere to go. Jared Bunch from Ashtabula, Ohio, is stacked up just about the line of scrimmage. He probably powered his way forward for about a yard. Johnny Buddy, number 87, as you see there, gets up off the bottom of the pile. The way some of those Spartans have those jerseys kind of tied, the numbers kind of scrunched together and kind of hard to read. There's Colazar with a conversation with Bo along the Michigan sideline. Third and seven, big play here for the Wolverines. Michigan is five out of 13 on third down conversions. This is a big one, very big, for both sides of the ball. Then you saw Bo, and then you saw George Portis with his glance out to the playing field. Boy, both teams really operating on that wishbone. Demetrius Brown throws, and he's got the man there, and it's gonna be touchdown Michigan. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, they got it. Right between Miller and uh, Harlan Barnett that time. Miller did not come up with the reception, and Michigan right back in that ball game. Colasar. I thought it was a big play, man. I wanted to make sure it was 40. John Colasar, who makes the catch, Jim, in traffic. John Miller was all over him. And uh, you see Miller there now going back. And he no, catches. No, Jamie Morris. Or is Jamie? Yep, Jamie Morris. Okay, yep. it was Jamie who, Colasar was behind him. Jamie Morris with a touchdown. Seven. Okay, Michigan is going to go for two because right now field goal is not going to do them any good, and Michigan calls timeout. So we've got 12.06 remaining in this ball game. It's Michigan State 14 and Michigan 9. It's 14 to 9. Michigan State leading the University of Michigan. It's a 17-yard score a moment ago. Pass play. Brown to Jamie Morris. Now they're trying to get within three points. And it's getting a little bit breezier here, a little bit colder at Spartan Stadium as the afternoon or early evening winds along here. Demetrius Brown sends Colazar number 40 in motion. It's Brown going to try to pass for the two. He throws, and he's got Colazar for the two points. Big play there right in front of Derek Reed. Reed and Harden Barnett were both covering deeper in the end zone, and he found Colazar just across the goal line. And now with the same 12.06 to go and Michigan to kick it away, it's Michigan's band playing the victors as they've cut the lead to Michigan State 14 and Michigan 11. Here it is again. As you know, it's pass all the way. Colasar is the receiver who comes from in motion, I believe. He was in motion. You see 40 in motion, and that's where the play flows, and they cleared the zone. They took the uh, two receivers, and Colasar with a diving catch on a low throw by Brown. They sent McMurtry and Callaway deep in the end zone, and then Colasar was the short man, and Brown, the left-hander, found him just, just over the goal line. Well, no one said it was going to be easy, and right now the Wolverines are back to within three points of Michigan State with 12 minutes, six seconds to play. The Spartans have yet to get a first down in the second half, and there's the hero on that two-point try, John Colasar, the junior. How many has he caught today uh, overall? Colasar has four catches for 65 yards and the two-point try. But Michigan State's passing now has got to come to life a little bit, I think, Jim, because they have not completed a pass in the second half as well. Spartans will have Craig Johnson and Blake Ezor back in the deep spots for Michigan. I tell you, Demetrius Brown has been picked off today. 
five times, yep. but there have been other key times when he has been right on target when he has had to be. And now that gives a new incentive now to Michigan's defensive unit because now if they can top the Spartans, uh, give the ball back to the offense, which has moved now in the second half. They've got themselves a whole new ball game. So Gillette comes in to kick the ball away. 12.06, a lot of time remaining. There you see Kimmerling's gesture that the game proceed. And the kick comes down, and it's taken by Ezor. He's at the 15. Ezor's at the 20. Can Ezor break away? He tries to cut in. Ezor to Johnson to the 25, 26, 27-yard line with it. And so Craig Johnson will put the ball in play at the 28-yard line of Michigan State. You know, Jim, that you think back on that questionable safety that wasn't called, how big that two points might loom at this point in the game. Johnson with a 15-yard return, Michigan State, puts the ball at their own 28. Okay, now ball control necessary here for Michigan State. Score, if at all possible. Even a field goal here. Would help a little bit, but a touchdown really needed by the Spartans. And McAllister, they give the ball off to Lorenzo White. He's galloped over the 30. He's still the 35 to the 40, off the sidelines, and Lorenzo stepped out of bounds at the 40-yard line, but that's a first down. I tell you, he's running with more power than he has at any time this season. That's the first first down of the second half by Michigan State. And now puts him well over the 165-yard march in rushing today. Lorenzo again just breaking tackles and then tiptoeing the sideline. Boy a lot of that wishbone uh, formation today. This is Lorenzo White again gets one good block and he rolls. He's uh, really dropped about the line of scrimmage that time tripped up as he tried to roll over a tackler and uh, really couldn't do it. Well let's give credit to the men up front. Pat Shermer, you start with your center. Your two guards, of course, Bob Kula, Vince Tata, and tackles David Houle and Tony Manderich, 290-pounder out of Ontario. They have been doing a fine job blocking for Lorenzo White today. Lorenzo's now up about the 47th or 48th leading rusher in the history of college football. There's a pass, and it's complete to Willie Boyer down at the Michigan 42-yard line, 43, they say. And that's going to be another Michigan State first down. You know, Willie Boyer has caught two very key catches in this football game, Jim. The first one was for 21 yards when he got smacked by David Arnold. And now he's going to catch this one. McAllister is right on the target as he finds the seam in the middle. And Boyer gets it into Michigan territory at the 43. That was a 17-yard pickup. Now the Spartans continue to march here and uh, put about three first downs in a row on the board. That'll keep the drive going. Here goes Lorenzo White again. Gets one good block. Lorenzo cuts in. It's still going. And, and uh, they don't quite get him out of bounds, I don't think. No, they don't get him out. But he's inside the 40 to about the 37 of Michigan. Lorenzo, one of the few players who wears the mouthpiece on the outside of his face mask and then just plugs it in right before he carries the ball. Boy, Bobby McAllister still looks so calm and to me, doesn't he, behind that the helmet today? Well, you saw the name. You saw the words, yep. poise and confidence. But now watch him. He just throws the mouthpiece back in before they snap the ball. Second down play. McAllister this time to James Moore, and he's straightened up as he reaches the 35-yard line of Michigan. And that will only be about two yards short okay, of another that first keeps, down. That keeps him honest. Yep. Uh, you see Messner, the big tackle in there for Michigan, who's obviously getting a little frustrated now. The clock running under 10 minutes to play. The Spartans lead by three. And this, as you can see, driving from their own 28. Michigan State has only converted 33% on third down opportunities. Now they, have, they need three yards. I tell you, this is a nervous crowd right now at Spartan Stadium. McAllister may be changing the call here at the line of scrimmage also. Bobby, pitch back comes to Lorenzo. The block, Lorenzo cuts in, still on his feet. He's close to the 30-yard line. They ruled he went out just about the 30, and if so, that's another first down. It Jim, is. Jim, there's a brand-new ball player in the game. Unless he has changed jerseys, number 30 was blocking on the right end on that time. Now, I don't know if Mike Sargent, who's number 30? He's not even on my roster. No, not on mine either. Either a uniform change by another player, 
That's 176 yards rushing for Lorenzo White. 176. And we're still counting here. Michigan State with the ball on the 29. Here's Lorenzo again, oh. and he gets just about a yard this time. Submarine by Alan Bishop, the man who recovered that fumble. Nice hit. Yeah, nice hit by Bishop. Go out to the left. Second down, still about 10 yards to go. Not much gain on that last play. McAllister's going to throw. Uh -oh. Throws, he's got, oh, he overthrows Risen. Risen was alone at the 25, and boy, he threw that way over Risen's head. Yes, he did. I was worried the Michigan defensive back was going to move up as you see Andre come back. That might have been what was worrying Bobby McAllister when he threw the ball, Terry. Yeah, now he's got a third down, and George Perlis, look at the tension on George's face yep. right now. Yeah, and there's Bobby McAllister looking to the sideline for the call. Well, you talk about Emmy Award-winning drama. We've got it out here today. Third and nine at the Michigan 28. 8.44, the time remaining, and that's in this total football game. These two teams look like they're going to battle right down the wire. Big third and eight play. McAllister, Lorenzo White, and Lorenzo going to the short side. Let's see how far he got before uh, he went out of bounds. He's not, he not even close. But I think they're setting up the field goal attempt, Jim. If uh, we see Langlow here now on fourth down, they're just trying to get it to be safe and try to get three out of it, I think. So let's see. It's not exactly a chip shot. It'll be a 43-yard attempt. His longest, I think, is 46 against Iowa. John Langlow, a freshman. See, a touchdown could still beat State, but now a field goal cannot. So that's why Langlow, the ball is placed down. The kick is up, and it is good. John Langlow has connected for the field goal, and that will mean that Michigan has got to get into the end zone with a touchdown to go ahead. Boy, oh, that's a big oh, one. A big one for John Langlow. 8.34 remains the ball game from Spartan Stadium now. It's 17-11, Michigan State over Michigan. Action now later in the final quarter. I tell you, that clock is moving awful slow for George Porlis' crew now, but it's moving awful fast for Michigan when they look up there after every play. Here's Demetrius Brown. He's got four more big downs to work with. Gives off to Jamie Morris. This time they've got him right at the line of scrimmage. Arlen Barnett. Yep, Arlen Barnett. 36 moved up from the corner spot to make the tackle. Now the clock runs. And, and Michigan can't stop it. Out in the far right, timeouts left. Michigan, zero. That is a big statistic. The clock runs, 6.15 and running. Spartans lead by six. If Michigan should score, of course, the extra point could win on the ball game. And that safety that wasn't also could have won it for Michigan State. But right now, the defense digs in. There's big John Elliott, the 306-pound tackle. Phil Webb has come in. McMurtry is in. There's the back of Demetrius Brown. they got to go to the air, Jim. Well, not this time. Uh, Brown keeps it on a keeper, and this time he's stripped up about a yard gain, and that's all. I don't understand that call. Second down and 10, and he's still running it with a quarterback option. They haven't run against Michigan State all day. I shouldn't say that because Jimmy Morris has run well, but... Uh, up the middle, the Spartans are just too tough in the trenches with John Buddy and Mark Nichols, Shemansky and Bergen and Travis Davis, Tim Moore, Percy Snow, Kurt Larson. They've been really tough on defense. Here's a big one, third and eight at the 49, and they're bringing in the pass-prevent defense now. Ridgeway and Craig Johnson come in. Yeah, and Larson checks out for Michigan State. There you see the clock moving by the time this play is over. There will be only about five minutes or less to play. Third down for Michigan. Here is Demetrius Brown. He's had success through the air some today. He throws. Oh, he's got his man McMurtry for a first down. A big play down to the Michigan State 36. That's a big one for Michigan. Five minutes to play. Oh, boy, Terry. You can feel everybody's stomachs turning now here in the ballpark. Well, that's the way it's, it's a classic. This is one of the classics. Here's McMurtry down the right sideline. Now he cuts it to the left in front of Craig Johnson, who just came in on the pass prevent, a former tailback who had to make the tackle from behind. Remember, Michigan has no timeouts left, and they have to get into the end zone to win it, but they are moving with the football. Michigan trying to come up with a great winner. Jamie Morris hit in the backfield for a loss oh. of maybe about two feet. In there was John Buddy, Joe Bergen, oh, what a hit. Travis Davis. What a hit. That's also a Tim hit. Moore. Loss of a yard. Joe Bergen, 45. 
They're just not moving on the ground, Jim. Joe Bergen from Elmhurst, Illinois. He didn't have anything to do with the state of Michigan before coming in here. But boy, does this one mean a lot to him. Look at him fight off the blocks yep. and come in to put the hit on uh, Jamie Morris. Joe transferred into Michigan State a couple of years ago. Four minutes and 15 seconds to play. And Michigan trails by six. Oh, I tell you, you can just feel the tension building and building and rising and rising here at Spartan Stadium. Second down, 11 to go for Michigan. Demetrius Brown gives off the fullback bunch, and he finds a little bit of an opening. He bucks down to the 31-yard line. He's going to leave them about six shy and bring up a third down. Another big third down play for Michigan. you got to give it credit to Michigan. If they feel they can run a Michigan State, as well as uh, the Spartan defense has played, they are inching, inching, and moving closer to that goal line. Three minutes and 40 seconds to play. Michigan on third down, now in five. They have converted 10 out of 16 third down opportunities. Okay, the crowd really hollering now. Demetrius Brown's got a shout just as loud or louder to be heard above him. Spartans dig in up front. Brown is going to throw. Brown is hit just as he throws. It's intercepted by Crum. No, Harlan Barnett. Barnett's got it. Harlan Barnett to 25, 30. Barnett 35, 40. 45 out of bounds. A big interception by Harlan Barnett from Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes! Boy, what a break for Michigan State. Out of Warren, Ohio, Harlan Barnett. That says it all. Here it is again, Jim. Demetrius Brown has been really in trouble at times today. Over the middle, there was nobody in, even close to that ball. Barnett picks it off and looks for Derek Reed to make a block and makes a nice run back, by the way. How far was the run back, J.D.? Well, we're looking for the interception record of Browns, but the Spartans now have the opportunity to defeat a Bo Schembechler team for just a second time in George Perlis's young coaching career, 36-yard return for number 36, Harlan Barnett. 36-yard interception by Harlan Barnett. And the fans are going absolutely bonkers in East Lansing right now because they can smell it. He wasn't even a starter at the beginning of the year. He had to battle back because Lanier Payton had won that job in the spring and in the early fall. And Barnett now talks to his coach, Norm Parker, says, settle down, boys. There might be a few plays left. Norm Parker, linebacker coach. Look, at you can see Derek Reed on the left, the transfer from SMU, and there is a very discouraged, I'm sure, Demetrius Brown. Well, Jim Adams, let's get back for the final three minutes and nine seconds as Harlan Barnett has the sixth interception by a Michigan State defensive back today. Well, Michigan has won eight straight over the Spartans here at Spartan Stadium, and 15 of the last 18, they give it this time to Lorenzo White, and Lorenzo just moves straight ahead up to about his own 47-yard line. Michigan now really concerned about the clock because sure. they can't stop it with a timeout. They're less than three minutes to play. And Michigan State is going to use every second that they have on the play clock. There's two minutes and 40 seconds, 48 seconds, and it's running. Lorenzo has 181 yards today. I don't think he ever gives up, but I know he's discouraged. I tell you, if the state wins this one today, uh, Bo will be just three to two over George Pullis. Yep. And that's a pretty even Steven over the five years. Second and nine. Second and nine, a very cool and calm. Bobby McAllister gives to Lorenzo and he just drives off his own left guard and tackle and uh, moves maybe a yard further is all up to about the 47 or 48 yard Need line. a first down, Jim, or you're gonna have to give up the football. You need a first down. And it wouldn't be a bad place to call a timeout either. After the clock goes down to, to one second, it wouldn't be a bad spot to call a timeout. And I, they're not going to do it, I guess. There's 15 seconds on the play clock. It's third and eight. Well, the Spartans don't want to give it back to Michigan if they can help it here. They'd like to retain position right down to that last tick of the clock. McAllister needs eight yards. Here's the pitch. Lorenzo White cuts in. Lorenzo gets not quite to the 50, maybe to the 50, but that's still going to be a gain of only two. Yep. And now the Spartans are going to have to kick it away. And this tension in the crowd is going to be maintained a few uh, seconds longer as Michigan's going to get the hands well, Jim, of the football again. Here's a case, Jim, where you really should take the penalty in the five seconds and let Montgomery punt it five yards further back. You watch what happens here. 
they're not even going to go out on the field. So let's take the penalty. Let the eight. There's 18 seconds left on the play clock. So that will mean a minute and one to play when Montgomery does kick the ball. We don't. He's at the 50 yard line. So you know that Greg can kick it 50 yards. Well with no timeouts that's going to leave Michigan just time for two or maybe three plays. Now there's the flag there's the zero and Michigan State will go back to their 45 yard line. I don't know what Bo's upset about he knows they're going to putt. The a minute and one now on the play clock or on the game clock That's seven penalties today Michigan State 53 yards. Well, here now the game, uh, Terry. You don't want to let some Michigan Wolverine come. <laughs> no, no, no. But fight, watch Montgomery fighting through that line and block this one. Boy, Montgomery really concentrate. Yep. Colazar is back deep for Michigan. Montgomery's at his own 31-yard line. Colazar is at his own 10. Martin is the snapper. Good pass from center, and Montgomery booms it. Colazar waits for it. Colazar fumbles the ball back to the 12-yard line. He gets away from one man. It goes to the sideline. He's bumped out of bounds by well, Michigan State again. Got him out there for the Spartans. 66, I think that was, Jim. Well, 66, and also in there was uh, their good buddy. His name suddenly... Uh, oh, Jenkins? Yeah. And Matt Vanderbeek. Yeah. Now, here's the situation. Michigan on their own 20-yard line is where he ran out of bounds. Colasar, after fumbling it, really brought everybody's heart right in their mouth. A 41-yard punt by Montgomery. Not a lot of hang time either. So just 49 seconds to play. No timeouts left. You know they will not huddle. They're just going to run. They've got their plays called, Jim. And you know it's gopher broke. With McMurtry and Jamie Morris, of course, who's a game breaker. He's like Anthony Carter was. Well, unless they get an incomplete pass here, that's the only way they can stop the clock with 49 seconds to go. Demetrius Brown goes back to throw. He may really uncork one. He throws downfield. McMurtry off his fingertips, incomplete, covered by Larson at the 43. So that will stop the clock with 44 seconds to play. He was there, by the way. That ball was catchable. Yep. It was high, but it was on his fingertips. You might review the scoring here, Terry, of the ball right. game that I'm we just have. looking at uh, Brown, 12 out of 24 passes completed, 146 yards, and, of course, six interceptions. Lorenzo White with two touchdowns today. We'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah, you're going to have to because we're probably going to lose our picture from ABC right after this ball game is over, I would imagine. There's Demetrius Brown back to throw again. He throws out here, completes it to his fullback, Webb, and Webb goes out of bounds to stop the clock at about All the right. 40. Michigan State had Michigan score first in this game. A 31-yard field goal by Gillette made it three to nothing. But the Spartans in the first quarter came back on a six-yard run by Lorenzo White. The extra point made it seven to three at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, Lorenzo again went two yards for a touchdown run. Langlo with the extra point. It was 14 to three at the half. In the third quarter, no scoring. In the fourth quarter, a 17-yard pass Brown to Morris for Michigan. And then a 43-yard field goal by John Langlow, Michigan oh. State. Okay, that brings us right up to date as to where we are with Demetrius Brown, Travis Davis trying to put some pressure. Brown passes downfield. It's intercepted by Todd Crum. Todd's at the 40-yard line and hold out at about the 42, and that should do it. That should do it all right. Seven interceptions by a Michigan State team today. They're absolutely... Going bananas in East Lansing, and rightly so. You don't beat this guy very often. He's won 15 times. He's only lost three to Michigan State, and now he will, looks like he's lost number four. Demetrius Brown, in all fairness, didn't have much of an opportunity in this situation. Michigan State was playing everybody back, and Todd Crum, that Roverback outfielder, two interceptions today. John Miller with four interceptions today. Harlan Barnett with a big interception. And there's the man from West Bloomfield in his senior year. He's beaten Michigan twice. Okay, time for about this play, and that's going to be it. 26 seconds on the clock. Bobby McAllister probably down to one knee. And he holds, and there he goes, down McAllister. On top of him for Michigan is big number 94, T.J. Osmond, the middle guard. 
That'll do it. seconds out is going to do it. There is going to be no more time, and the celebration has begun even as the clock ticks down. Michigan State has defeated Michigan by a score of 17 to 11. There's a three-way tie for first tonight of the Big Ten between Michigan State, Minnesota, and Indiana. Next week, the Spartans go to Northwestern to play the Wildcats. Look at the celebration here at Spartan <laughs> Stadium. Mayhem. And now the celebration is going to continue probably right about until and beyond the time that you're going to watch this telecast. Lorenzo White, 185 yards rushing, and Jamie Morris, 108 yards rushing right there. Neither one of them have to hang their head. And there is a carried off the field coach, the, the tough, feisty Lithuanian, George Perlis, with a second victory over Bo Schembechler. And the Michigan State flag waves high and proud tonight. From Spartan Stadium, I'm Jim Adams, along with Terry Brigham and our statistician, J.D. Anderson. The final score, as look at the celebration here at the stadium tonight. What a Saturday night celebration in East Lansing. The final score, Michigan State 17 and the University of Michigan 11. Well, Jim, we're going to come back with a little postscript here. It's been 18 years since Michigan State defeated a Michigan team in East Lansing. Remember, in 84, it was in Ann Arbor. These people have waited a long time to get on this field and celebrate. And look at the crowd on the field. The police could not control it. Your thoughts now, pal? Well, I'm just going to put the mic on for just one second. Hardly anything to uh, point out. We've been broadcasting sporting games for many, many years. And this will go down as one of the finest and certainly the, one of the most thrilling ball games we have ever had, especially when you get the post-game reaction such as this. How often do you see a story wound up with the final chapter still being written after the ball game is over? And as I said earlier, by the time you finish watching this telecast tonight at a very late hour tomorrow morning, uh, the celebration is going to be continuing, I'm sure. Well, Jim, you think back to... The Southern Cal victory, a big one on Labor Day against a good Pac-10 team, a victory over Iowa in Iowa City, and to defeat Michigan anytime, anywhere, those losses to Notre Dame and Florida State in the top six in the nation don't look very important right now. This is what looks important, 2-0 yep. in the Big Ten. Yeah, the Spartans will be back in the top 20 everywhere. This is the third top 20 team they've beaten this year, and so as the celebration continues, and look at that shot. A great shot to end it with. Again, the final score here today, Michigan State 17 and Michigan 11. Oh, look at that. Everybody celebrating tonight. Presentation of MSU football is made possible in part by Oldsmobile, featuring the Cutlass Calais and the new Quad 4 engine. Oldsmobile quality. Feel it. Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts, who have the right tools, training, and genuine GM parts to help you keep that great GM feeling. And Auto Owners Insurance Company, for all your life, home, car, and business insurance needs. Available through your local independent auto owner's agent, listed in the yellow pages under insurance. This has been a Spartan Sports Special. Join us every Saturday night at 11 for more football action. Here's Jack from the field. Keith, an 80-year rivalry would be reason enough to go after the game today, but what's more important for these Michigan State Spartans is Rose Bowl. Now, they're only 1-0 in conference play and kind of very early to think about it, but throughout the week in talking to them, they've said if they can knock off Michigan, everything will come up roses. They may be forgetting about Ohio State, but today it's Michigan. They want to beat them, go to the Rose Bowl. Back up to Keith. John Langlo will kick it off for the Michigan State Spartans. Michigan uh, receiving the ball and will have the first possession with Jamie Morris and Alan Jefferson, the deep people. He's put his two tailbacks back there now to return the opening kickoff. Jefferson, but the sophomore from Detroit finally controls it and gets it out to about the 20-21 yard line. 
Elliot Hoosar, Vitaly Chester, Doring Brown. Big people up front. I mean really big people for the Michigan Wolverines. McMurtry and Colasar are wide. Quarterback to Demetrius Brown. Bunch will open at fullback. Jared Bunch is a 225-pounder. And, of course, Jamie Morris will come in there at the tailback position. And uh, number 23 is on his way into the... University of Michigan football record books with this kind of performance. He's surely headed for a thousand plus seasons if he stays healthy. And he's, he'll get dinged up, as his coach said, but he'll play for you. All right, call it first down from the 21. And they send Chris Callaway in motion and give it to Morris. They fake the reverse. Morris keeps it, gets a block on the corner, and breaks it. Out to the 41. 20-yard pickup, Todd Crum saved the touchdown. Well, we talked about the stunning 4-3 of Michigan State. One way to get around it is to go wide. They'll fake a reverse. Perla says, we build our defense from the inside out. That time, a good block on the outside. And Morris, one man away from breaking it on the first play. So Michigan starts out east and west and then Got it going north and south for the big gainer. Brown gives it to Morris again, and Jamie runs into the middle, and there's never going to be a whole lot of room in the middle against this defensive alignment. Consisting of the down guys, uh, Bergen, Nichols, Davis, and Buddy. The linebackers are Moore, Snow, and Larson, and uh, you're going to hear Snow's name called a lot. He always gets in on a lot of plays. Reed, Miller, Crum, and Barnett are the defensive people in the secondary for Michigan State. Motion Beckler on the sidelines after a bout with kidney stone. He's going to have that fixed, he said, next week. It is second down from the 44. Second and seven. That's McMurtry in motion. And ball goes to Jamie Morris, bouncing outside, runs away from one tackler, and hits the sideline right at midfield. So he's a little bit short of the first down by a yard. Todd Crum, number 35, and Harlan Barnett, the free safety and the quarterback on that side, getting over to get him. But again, Morris was just a step away from something really big. Third down and one with Bill Webb coming into the backfield now as they line it up in a wishbone formation. Give it to Morris, get the block, turns the corner on second effort and appears to have his first down, and he does. At the Michigan State 47, he got away from Harlan Bennett. Bennett had him behind the line of scrimmage but couldn't hold it. Well, Michigan State's going to have to sharpen up their tackling on the corner. I'm just going to comment the last two plays that Morris has carried. He has broken a tackle to make uh, additional yardage in that time to pick up his first down. Jamie only stands 5'7", but he's got 185 pounds plus. He's a tough, tough runner. On first down from the 47, Polisar goes to motion for Michigan, and Morris has it one more time and gets daylight on the right side and goes down the sideline. Tiptoeing all the way to the 34 of Michigan State. And again, Todd Crum makes the hit. Stunning 4-3 as we were talking about. Watch the two inside men. This tackle will go first. The other one will loop. Morris will come through the hole over here and still get good yardage. 75 as Davis comes around. The fullback picks him up. Nice to hold there for Morris to squeak, uh, squirt through and a good uh, pickup. Yeah, Bunch uh, laid a hit on the pursuer. Got his man, and Morris got his yards, and he got a first down for Michigan at the state 34. Demetrius Brown for his first pass goes down the middle with it. Hits Polisar inside the 15, down at the 14. And Brown's first pass is successful. That could mean a lot for him. He threw three interceptions the first game of the season against Notre Dame. Since then, he's only thrown one interception. This drive couldn't have been orchestrated any better. Get your running game going, use the play-action pass, and then get your wide receiver in behind the linebackers. And as you said, Keith, the first completion for the young Brown is a big one. 
Now he's going to go to a double tight end alignment. And the right side of the line where Big John Elliott works, probably going to see a lot of action right about here. John is 305 pounds. Give it to Morris. He goes that way, picks his way through the traffic. And a penalty flag here against Michigan State face mask. And uh, the Wolverines are going to move it on downfield as a result of the penalty. Snow and Miller on the tackle, but in reaching for Morris, somebody got his face mask. Jim Kimmeling, the referee. Les Rule and the umpire. Tom Ranson, the headlinesman. John Ask, the line judge. Otto Coles, the field judge. Henry Armstead, the side judge. Back judge is Glenn Fortin. We have a five-yard face mask against the defense. Still first down. Jamie Morris has run six times, 47 yards. Picked up three first downs. And uh, got an upset building. In the Big Ten, third quarter now, Indiana 17, Ohio State 10. The football is at the eight. First down and five for Michigan. Brown to Morris. And Jamie gets to the four. It'll be second down and one for the first down from the four-yard line of Michigan State. This is the one thing that George Perlis and his coaching staff did not want to see. Michigan take the ball and just pound it down their throats. They've only thrown the ball one time. It was successful. Well, a lot of these uh, plus yardage plays have been because of Jamie Morris. The defense was in pretty good shape. Morris just made good moves to pick up some positive yards. Back to the wishbone as Phil Webb checks in with Jared Bunch and Jamie Morris. Big man up front gets it, penalty flag goes down. Bunch carries, gets what appears to be the first down, but let's see about the penalty flag. It came from one of the men on the side. Line judge threw the flag. Well, let's see about the flag. The Cecil Laundry here, the Michigan people say it's on Michigan State. Let's see what Jim Kimberling says. He agrees offside against the Spartans. So the Spartans have made two defensive mistakes. One an inadvertent face mask and now an offside. And they're helping the Wolverines down. And you see Jamie Morris now has moved up into second place among the all-time running backs at Michigan, and there have been some great ones. Certainly have. Uh, Bush Wolfwalk uh, went on to play pro football. Rob Lytle, Jamie Morris, his brother, is playing pro football, and I'm sure that uh, Jamie will be a high draft choice but once his uh, eligibility is over with at the University of Michigan. The interesting thing about Morris, he is only 5'7". His linemen are 6'4", 6'5", and all the way over 270, so a lot of the defensive players can't see him when he's coming through the cracks. It is first and goal from the two for Michigan. Morris, bouncing outside, trapped behind the line of scrimmage, and brought down back on the six. John Miller, the strong safety, was the man that got the first hit on him. Well, they're both sides are a little feisty down there, but well, that was we a good said, play. We thought that this was going to be a very physical game, and some intimidation uh, was going to be present early on. And it's no surprise to see him uh, pushing and shoving after the play. That loss, incidentally, dropped Jamie back to third all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take bets that he'll go back to second pretty soon. Yes, he will. <laughs> second and goal from the sixth. Brown wants to throw it. Out of bounds. He could not stop, and he went out of bounds back on the 13-yard line. He kept looking and looking and looking. He knew pursuit was there. Derek Reed, who came to Michigan State out of SMU, chased him all the way to the sidelines. And then by the time uh, Demetrius realized where he was, he was out of real estate. Well, it was a poorly designed play. I think it was a passing situation. And they had a wishbone, double tied in. It was a slow developing play. Michigan State read pass the entire way. Good coverage all over the field. So it is third and goal, and the ball is back down outside the 13. Here comes the noise. Young quarterback Brown 
This is one of the things that he's going to have to deal with here today. When to back off and when not to. As, uh, talking with the Shem Beckler earlier in the season, he said it's tough to win in the Big Ten on the road because of the noise factor, especially when you have a young quarterback. Well, Jim Kemmerling gave him the benefit of the doubt on that one. However, uh, when you know when Michigan comes back up, the crowd will come right with it. The best thing for a young quarterback to do is to get up under center, act like you don't hear the crowd, and get the ball snapped. In that way, you'll just uh, ignore the crowd. If you back off a time or back off twice, the crowd then feels like they can be in the ball game. If you just get up there and snap it, you take them out of it. You also run the risk of getting the flag on the home team if you persist too long. Michigan State players now asking the crowd to quiet down a little bit. The guys on the sidelines are waving their arms trying to jack them up. So <laughs> I'm sure Jim Beckler has told Brown what to do in this situation. That is not snap it if you can't hear it. Third down and goal from the 13. Straight back, pressure coming. One man misses Brown. His pass is away into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Pass intended for Jeff Brown. Tim Moore just missed him for a big loss. Here's Tim Moore. Now watch the stunt. This man's going to come outside. He's going to loop to the inside. Brown and make a good move to get out of his way. You see a huge gap there for Tim Moore. And then he just throws it away. But a sack was avoided. On the field now, Mike Gillette for a field goal try from 31 yards. And it is good. And so he has tied... Ali Haji Sheik as Michigan's all-time leader in field goals with 31 as the Wolverines go to the early lead. Today's game marks the fifth straight top 20 opponent for Michigan State. I'm Jim Hill back in New York at IABC Studios, and Indiana is trying to pull off a very big upset. They lead Ohio State 17 to 10 in the third quarter. Indiana's Tom Poles has just scored on a six-yard touchdown run. The last time Indiana defeated Ohio State in 1951. Let's go back now to Keith Jackson. Lord of mercy, they'd have a party in Bloomington, wouldn't they, if they ain't going to win that ball game? They start four and one. We had the Ohio State last week, and their offense only scored 10 points at Illinois, so they're having some offensive problems. Right now, Craig Johnson and Blake Ezor are the deep people for Michigan State as Mike Gillette, who's put his name in the record book, will kick it off for Michigan. The Spartans about to get the ball for the first time. He's hooked the kick and hooked it out of bounds, so he'll back up five and kick it again. Well, I think everybody figured uh, that uh, Bill Mallory was going to make things happen over at IU, and he certainly has. Got a good quarterback in Schnell, as you see Bo kind of chuckling. You know, it's not a bright day here. Bo's got those dark glasses on. I think it's just out of habit, but uh, getting back to Indiana, Schnell is the quarterback, is playing well. They've got an excellent linebacker in Van Wakers, Van Waiters, and a good running back. And uh, if Indiana beats Ohio State in Columbus, it'll be a big upset. They're now in the fourth quarter. One of the things about uh, Bill Mallory, though, is he teaches a toughness. He sells that toughness factor to his kids where he's been, and he's obviously done it over there. All right, here we go. And one, and one, from the 30. And one of his kids is on the field here today. He's a strong safety, a starting strong That's safety right. for the Wolverines. Gillette from the 30. Hits it high, and it's a relatively short kick as uh, Johnson comes up and takes it for Michigan State. And the Spartans will start from their 32-yard line. So that's pretty good field position as Mandarich, Kula, Sherma, Tata, Hool, and Sargent open up front. And the backfield consists of McAllister, the quarterback, and uh, everybody believes, and certainly the coaching staff believes, that he has to play a key role today, along with Lorenzo White. Hugh is the fullback, starting at fullback with Boyer. Outside, along with Andre Rison. Rison is the guy that both here. Jim Beckler worries about Rison and the big play. Hugh is not in there. It is James Moore 
in at fullback. To start out of the I formation, it goes to Lorenzo White. And White will get maybe a yard before he is rolled up by the Michigan the linebacker John Willingham. Mesna Harris Herman are the deep people. Now here's where Michigan could get hurt. All four of these linebackers are young, and uh, none of them figured heavily in Michigan's defensive plans at the start of the season. But injuries have come along and put them all on the field with Campbell, Mallory, Mitchell, and Arnold in the secondary. Second down, call it eight. And this time it is more the fullback, wedging his way up to around the 37 before he is stopped, brought down by an inside backer, J.J. Grant and Mark Messner in the American League Championship Series. Minnesota in the seventh, leading Detroit six to five. Oh, they came back. Like the Cardinals came back last night. Well, the tra Twins trying to shake off that road jinx early on if they can. Third down for the Spartans. They need about four, and McAllister gets to the outside, gets the first down. He crossed the 45 and picks up a first down. Now, this is what they want from him. When you run the ball down the line, he's made some bad decisions in getting rid of the ball. Here's one of the linebackers. This is a run the whole way. Watch the linebacker as one of the wide receivers, I believe it was Ryzen, comes in and blocks him to help spring him right there. It's Boyer, 17. This was a run the entire way. And if uh, McAllister is having problems throwing the football, they want to get some production out of him running it. Remember what George Burles said. He wants him to run north and south. First down. And McAllister comes, makes the pitch, keeps it, goes to midfield five yards. This is the comment that Bo Schembechler had yesterday in talking about his linebacking core. I would say that the four linebackers we play with in the Michigan State game, we did not figure would be playing for us at this time. Well, that's, that's a major adjustment. <laughs> in your thinking. Well, their, their, their leader on defense, Andre McIntyre, tore an Achilles tendon last year. He's a fifth-year senior out for the year. It was a severe loss at linebacker for the Wolverines. Here's your wishbone. They just turn around and pitch it back to Lorenzo White. And White is going to be held short of the first down as they knock him out of bounds around the Michigan 46. Anthony Mitchell got the hit on him. But White last week in the second half against Iowa which he gained 166 yards, finally started putting his shoulder into people. He's been tiptoeing around some in the earlier ball game. And I would imagine he's surely, he would, he would admit it yesterday when I talked to him, but I'm of the opinion he's got to be getting a little tired of all this Heisman hype. Yeah, he is, and this is a wishbone, double tight end wishbone. White's got it again, but he isn't going anywhere that time as number 30 came up like a bullet, John Milligan, and got him. Milligan saw the opening and just came flying through a sophomore out of Trenton, Michigan. That's going to bring up fourth down and a yard, and it brings into the ball game the punter for Michigan State. And he's a good one, Greg Montgomery, averaging right at 46 yards per kick, ranked number five in the nation, but. By the end of the season, it may be better than that. Eric Campbell is the deep man for the Wolverine. He hits it high. He wants to kill it short of the goal line, and he's going to, forcing Campbell into a fair catch back at the eight. So the Wolverines have the ball back on their own eight-yard line. 39 yards, very efficient kick by Montgomery with 8.16 to go in the first quarter. All right, Al, thanks very much. Now George Perlis is eyeballing his defense. Michigan took the ball and marched it down the field. The defense really didn't get involved until they got inside the 10-yard line. Then they shoved them back and forced them to take a field goal. They go to Jamie Morris. Morris is hit. Fumbles the football, and Michigan has recovered it. Ball came popping loose in the Notre Dame game. Jamie had a couple of loose footballs, and it hurt him. It was John Vitale, the center, who will cover it. Not much there in the four hole, as you would call it if you're a football player, and that time he gets up, uh, upended. The ball squirts out, and Vitale is on it for the Wolverines, but uh, nothing there that time. There's a loss of a yard back to the seven. Second down, 11 for the Wolverines. Mike Mercury is off the field.